Fuck. Fuck. Son of a bitch, where do I... Just don't stop, just don't stop. Maybe I put some distance down. I haven't yet. No, no, no. Just keep fucking going. Don't stop this, this bastard. These are getting worse. They're getting worse. Oh, fuck. I need an edge. Fighting him didn't work last time. That... It's not happening again. I just need to get the hell out of here. How the fuck do I wake up? God. Shut up. Shut up! Let me out! Man, I shot out of bed. Well, I guess I'm not getting back in now. <sighs> Fuck off. <sighs> Just right click a fence? Hey, yo. Nice. Hmm. Hmm. I'm missing something. There we go. There's the part of the puzzle. As you awaken from your nightmare, you would look up toward the balcony and out at the stars. It's colder in your room tonight. So much more lonely. You sigh a bit to yourself as you stare at the moon. Suddenly, however, you hear a quiet knocking at your door. Is that the strange noise that you made out in your dream? This knocking would seem a bit more urgent. Then after another moment of silence, the door would slowly open. Probably just London coming to check on you. <sighs> I told you, London, it's fine. I don't need you to sleep in here again, okay? I'm alright. Actually, I do have Hollow Knight. I guess I can play it again, but I've already played that one. I'll look into it. Do you? What? You quickly whip your head in the direction of the voice in utter shock as your eyes lock with Lucia, who stares at you absolutely mortified. Ah, uh, Lucia, what are you doing here? She doesn't answer your question, asking one of her own. What was that about you wanting someone to sleep in here with you? Her eye twitches in utter horror at your statement. What it sounds like? I can swear I can explain. Uh... Turn around vessels, she grits her teeth. That's a fuck up. <laughs> she grits her teeth, her knuckles turning white around the doorknob. You notice that her cheeks would turn red once more. You, you disgusting pig! She huffs, stammering in her place for some time before eventually she would commit and walk forward, slamming the door behind her and making her way inside. T come in. She starts to pace in front of your bed, walking back and forth and back and forth. So, why are you- what did you mean by it? She snaps her head in your direction. What? The other day, when we were stuck in the trash compactor, you told me that I was worth it. You said, and I quote, I will give you all the reason in the world to trust me because you're worth it. That, that, that is what I said, yeah. I will continue giving suggestions over time if you like. Give me all the suggestions in the world, and one of them will stick, I promise. But why? What did you mean by such a... Such a ridiculous statement, Vessel? Tell me. We were about to get crushed. I was just from the pocket of your old coat. She would throw a small dagger, pointing it toward you threateningly with a bit of sweat dripping down her brow. Tell me! Now! Jesus, where did you get a knife? I came here to get answers, and I'm not leaving without them, Vessel. Do you understand me? She growls, gritting her teeth. She jabs the knife further in your direction. So, explain yourself. Hello, the Silver Shadow 201. Welcome. What I miss? Eh, not much. <laughs> it's a moment of silence as you try and think of the right words to say. It was just spur of the moment, all right? I thought we were going to die. You're a vessel. Do you really expect me to believe that on the verge of death you decided to get sentimental? 
You can't die. So tell me the truth. Look, I really cared for you, you know. Back before the edict took you. Is Lily streaming? Later. Yes, she is. She processes your statement before gritting her teeth. More of this? How do I know you're not lying to me like everyone else? Look, you just have to take my word for it. I would have done anything for you. Slowly, her arm would lower the knife. Is that so? She hesitates, looking down at you with narrowed and conflicted eyes. You notice that once more, she would have color in her, more color in her cheeks than before. Do you still feel that way? Yes. Your quiet and shy answer would cause you to avoid eye contact. You feel your own face get a bit hotter in embarrassment. But that's when you watch the knife fall to the ground in front of you. Quickly, you look up at Lucia, who stares at you with the most conflicted and bashful expression. Her eyes glistening and her cheeks practically glowing at your statement. Realizing what her expression must look like, she steps back, flustered, bringing her hands up to her face to cover her own embarrassment. I... You... You... She snaps at you, rushing towards the door. You're disgusting, do you hear me? Absolutely disgusting! Without another word, she slams the door and leaves. You hear her boots as they rush away from the scene. Okay, then. Please, you know, actually, Jester, just come back and take me out in my sleep. I think that would be a better alternative than what just went out down. Really haven't left. Anyway. What does she want? None the Teruga. They're streaming. Dio. Dio? I don't know. I don't know any Japanese. <laughs> None? <laughs> I didn't know how to respond. Why did I hear a third voice like for a half a second? Who the fuck was that? Hello? That was my inside conscious. Okay. That yeah. Good. Because totally I was fucking around with look at the shit. Look at the shit. Got the resist. I have a resistance charm. That's all good. I understand that. Strength charm. Fuck if I know, dude. <laughs> yep. Okay. Did, did you just? Do you 
want some pie? Mm -hmm. Why are there roses right there? Why not? <laughs> Who did this? Me. Why did this? Because I wanted flowers. I wanted things to look nice. No more, I guess. <laughs> wow, okay, God. You, for, you get your ass bit by a dog once and no one appreciates the flowers that you fucking put up. God damn. Who the you fuck did hide. this? <laughs> that probably was Ovec. <laughs> Is, it's like half void armor, half not. The so hell? probably Ovec. Ovex key to blood oath. Yeah, this is Ovec. What the fuck, Ovec? Ove Ovex key to blood. There's other half of his armor is down here. What the? F <laughs> what a Never fucking signed. strange person. I don't know who you're talking about, but anyway, there's a pie now. You guys want pie? I made a lot. No. Why did you make? You guys are really all that's left right now. Everyone else is out. You guys are the only ones that don't have anything to do right now. You already did all of your missions and shit. I mean, I, yeah, kind of went back to Oncar. Uh, no, I went. I checked on the Oncar people. They're fine. Um, still haven't said hello or anything, but they're good at the least. But uh, in terms of everything, I saw Cam, but she, I think, blipped for a hot second to go do something. And oh yeah, she, like restart her computer because she really loves causing things to like take longer than you know they yeah, already are. I was, trying yeah. to stay <laughs> I was trying to stay in character, but fuck you, I guess. <laughs> fuck you, Nvidia. You guys are bookworms. Oh my god, you guys are bed bugs, termites, fleas, scabies. That's you, chat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, well, while we wait for Kim, we're going to deprive her of- I don't care that she just joined the game. Hey, Dusk. Dusk would be watching Nebula carefully. No, oh boy. Is he stalking his prey? What the hell? Who's Nebula? Cam with no brim. Cam with no brim. This person. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, no. Sh um, what what is the warning that you normally give people about Nebula? Uh, yeah, it slips my mind. It's like something don't stay around or else don't stay for long or just introduce yourself first and foremost because she will know your name. No, that's not the warning part. I think the warning part is the more time you spend around her, the more likely it is that she's going to start figuring out every single facet of your entire being. Oh, oh, Haven okay. and Nebula are talking. They oh. seem to be comfortable in one another's presence. Ugh, Cam looking ugly. Ne right, Cam you. looking oh, average. I'll leave. <laughs> I'll leave now, I'll leave now. Yep, I'll they're leave. just both chatting right now. Gone. Th thank you, Nebula, for the compliment. You're back to normal. Okay. What? She will slap your ass. Yes, she will slap your ass. And apparently she likes mine. Unless you're <laughs> underage. I don't, I don't think she'll lay a hand on Ghostinis. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Nebula, you know, respects, you know. <laughs> you know? What type of wings are those? Wait, are those wings or are those... What are they? They are wings. Yes. I've seen her fly with them. But yeah. they're kind of like almost like eight tendrils that are all interconnected that beat at the same time. It's kind of hard to explain. Oh, that shit fire. Where, where? Okay. I'm just checking hey, around yo, for people. Hey, Blink's up here. Shit fire. Blink. Making sure that everyone's like staying on top of their work here and seeing who's in right now. I've been trying to do more of a re doing more research alongside Miss Remington regarding that project extension. It is, though, a little difficult to do that research when Miss Remington is incapable of seeing ghosts. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Maybe get Cat to fix that real quick? Mm, yeah, that's like ever been like a pleasant experience for people. I mean, a good, I mean, our allies Can you like, like one person, just like one person that Cat's done that to where they didn't immediately have to go through like der therapy? To be fair, hmm. don't all of us need therapy. Speak for yourself. I'm in peak condition. Rat Caspian folks. would be setting okay. the table. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> breakfast. Not even gonna fucking play with that. Hey, yo! What's for breakfast today? Yeah. Get the fuck out of my way, Camelot warrior. Fruit salad. Waffles! Maple syrup waffles and toast. Bread. Fruit Bread. salad. What? What? <laughs> yummy, oh yummy. yummy. Oh no! You threw. Right. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm stealing that piece of. Pie a lot of things. 
<laughs> My chat is protesting me right now. What are they doing? What are they protesting? Dude, shut up. <laughs> Do they want to be fat again? They call you Stinky Realm Boy. They call me Stinky Realm Boy because you as an angel say that dread stink, and so now that's stuck, evidently. I'm so smart. <laughs> The brain has chosen to Shut up. Like How are you like a whole blood. head shorter than Dan when Dan is in himself short? No, Ghosty's I'm not, I'm just a small short. child. And she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Rex, I'm not short. What the fuck? You're not short? You know what here? I don't know, it's hard to tell with like, you know, when we're all like approximately like two meters tall. Ghosty, stop hugging the candle. I'm like She's the height of the candle. <laughs> I'm like slightly shorter than you, Rex. Like I'd say. Yeah. I'm tall enough now. Oh, well, I never said that I was ginormous either. Wait, what's my canonical height? Oh, I don't care. Candy knows. <laughs> my canonical height. <laughs> Who knows? I just know I'm slightly shorter than Rex. I just know it's however Candy wants to write me. <laughs> Damn, five eight. Ah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not short then. Five, five. Ghosty is football size though. <laughs> Ghosty can be thrown. Like, look at this. This is a whole head shorter. Like, I look straight on and I could literally see past her. Yeah, like, I have to partially look down at her. How do you carry That's her on that sad. hammer? The hammer is taller than you. Like, literally, <laughs> look at the length. It is her height! <laughs> so, what's suit. with the outfit? Oh, I, I thought I told oh, you. Oh, yeah, this. the Halloween thing. I forgot. I also have this. That, that, and that's not unpleasant for you, question mark? How is yeah, that? Is that a pleasant ghosty? That's a... I don't like it, but it hurts people? Yeah, yeah. and it can hurt you, my... Yeah, that, that... What the fuck? She'll learn out the hard way when those wings turn black. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We'll do yeah. that. I don't know. Okay. Oh, wait. I'll no, explain it to you later. How about that? Sound good? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll resolve that. I suppose you mortal women are not horrible. Oh God, women. no! Don't bond with the pirates, please. Oh Anna. no! Oh no! You know, you're not too bad, Hellstone. Ren, Ren winks at an Arium. There we go. <laughs> fucking Cam's like I two processor had to like fucking load oh, that shit up. Uh, that was like dial-up internet right there. I could literally see someone on a switchboard reconnecting shit so that she could fucking <laughs> figure it out. Yeah, um, one of the little gremlins in my head's on vacation right now, so my brain runs slower. I apologize. Blurring? I am... I am only occasionally, oh you know, fully conscious. Today's not one of those days. I have had no breaks all day today. Alice That's why the stream actually happened late. <laughs> Sorry. Alice is leaning back against the wall casually. She would seem rather laid back. I think if she's leaning, okay. <laughs> bah! Is there anyone down here? Yeah, sorry, Maybe. I'm not used to the dynamic and chemistry of this group, so I'm struggling to strike up conversation right now. That's completely understandable. This is this is a unique group. <laughs> Hydrate, thank you. I'm kind of like using my chat as a crutch, right? Stop! 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 <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Are you, are, are you my fine? phone is like, you know, pooping its pants. I'm like watching like my stream suddenly start buffering on my phone. <laughs> you know? Mm. Listen, if your chat's good this hydrate. stream, I'll feed them in the next stream. Just almost deleted Twitch for a sec. That would have been an L. Donut. <laughs> just hand me a fucking donut? This isn't even glazed. It's literally just a fucking circle of donut. bread. That's what a bagel is! <laughs> I think I'm finding out the dynamic slowly. <laughs> yeah, I annoy Rex and Rex gets annoyed. That's our dynamic. What did you need help with? <laughs> Fucking an hour later. I know, right? I have you showered me that with one. bagels. Why are they donut? They don't have glaze, right? So it can't be a glazed donut. The only I thing mean... that separates the bagel from the donut is the size of the hole. One could fit your dick. One could fit mine. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, but can, but <laughs> it's a different type of dough. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Just a okay. bit of help organizing. As well as perhaps some avoid help avoiding my old coven sisters above. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my hydration. Oh my god, it goes deeper. Oh okay. yes. Malachi! This is, well it only is going deeper than this, but when we lifted it up, you know, that little hole wasn't necessary anymore. Yeah. Sorry, That's John. Right. I'm in a little bit of a feral mood today. I have gotten negative sleep and negative rest. I have, like, been stressing all day today. I was like, man, I gotta do this thing because I need to go to- I will resize you. So, anyway. <laughs> I had to go to, like, a poetry reading thing to, like, fulfill one of my requirements. But then, like, you know, in the middle of, like, my class, like, before that poetry reading, I, like, check, like, a schedule for something. And then I realize I have a rehearsal that's, like, for three hours. And it's, like, six to nine. You know, so it perfectly eclipses nice. the poetry reading thing. But then it also is this. And there was, like, a bunch of work that still needed to be done for this stream. But I wasn't around to do it. And so I was, like, constantly walking between shit. And, like, at a certain point in the day, I realized my phone is at, like, 20%, like, battery. And I had to go, like, four hours with it at, like, 20%. Like, limping. You know, because if it, like, goes off, I don't get to see if, like, the fucking bus is going to show up. So I can't catch a shuttle back to my place. And then if that happens, I have to walk for, like, half an hour. What is this strange room exactly? I close out of the dialogue. Fuck. Mm, I sense magic here, but it's not true magic. Is it, is it cool if I continue reading? Or do you want I to got so reading? mad. I just fucking fucked myself <laughs> over. Oh my God. Do you want me to read, Rex? Go ahead. Read it real fast. Okay. No, I'm in it. Shut up. Okay, okay. Mm, I sense magic in here. Well, not true magic. Strange. Well, at least it appears rather quiet. For once. Well, that makes sense. And now I'm here. <laughs> Go see, I'm going to punt you into the sun. You know, I actually fixed up my earth spell and I'm about to fucking use it. You wanna go? <laughs> you fixed up your there earth spell? Yeah, it's stronger. Use it. Least. I'm not down there. Ah. I'm not down there. Nice. I'm not down there. there. If I recall correctly, earth is actually some chunky damage with none of the drawbacks as like flux, so. Yep. Good choice. Rex going insane here? Yeah. Don't worry, I got... Is I got that... Ghosty under control. No, that's I'm... Nyx. I thought that was... Oh my god, from a distance, Nyx looks like Morella. And I was like, how is she in two places at once? Griffin oh. training? Oh, with Dawn. Oh, shit! And Ozzy and Harmony. <laughs> Ozzy's trying to mimic Dawn's movements. But as a cat. Oh, that's cursed. Is Ozzy <laughs> standing on two legs right now? He's yeah. got like his front two paws like he's posted up. <laughs> yeah. He's boxing. Harmony, you know that video that's all like, it would be quite shocking if that cat could hit the whip. But a cat could never do that. <laughs> and then uh, that's Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy, yeah. Harmony <laughs> would be watching Don curiously. Oh boy, it's what's Beastie like doing? Minutes. I'm currently very scared, Dan. Be scared. Rex is feral. I need to work Rex out the other scared. energies that I can actually take scene seriously as well, you know what I mean? We get it out now. That's true. Just keep punching me into The only thing I'm gonna get is my pent up rage when I literally split Cam in two, like fucking like meiosis, man. Beastie would be <laughs> sitting with Harmony and Dawn, eating some strawberries quite quietly but messily. She looks up at you as you approach her. No, 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 no not yet. Not yet. You can't talk to me yet. Apparently this is later. Candy doesn't know how to fucking piece things out for streams, and so she likes inconveniencing us as much as possible. You are gay. What? I couldn't think of anything better. <laughs> nice. Staying alive. Hello, Don. We're moving forward. <laughs> the one. Is it a new Don? Is it a new no. day? Is it a new life? You deserve to die for that ancient joke. Oh, thank sorry. God. It's my time. What are you guys talking about? That's an old dawn. Put me out of my misery. Wait, it was <laughs> never made day? Oh, no, daylight cycle's on. Good. You take your sword and your shield. To keep your guard up here with the shield. And then when you hear... And then here, you lunge forward with the sword. You jab here or here. See? Keep your feet apart or your opponent will knock you down. Oh. Griffin would be following Dawn's movements, jabbing at the dummy aggressively. He's actually training. <laughs> You're a pretty good teacher, aren't you, baby? And he's back to being a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
One day he'll learn his actions have consequences. Maybe give him to Atticus for a hot second every time he does that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be smart. Can we do that? No, because that would mean pissing off Atticus. What? Actually, that yeah, you're true. right. That is true. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a method, but I don't think mm. we're ever going to get a method. I'm literally about to start using this group as tertiary weapons. What? I know some. I've already told this story to me ten bloody times! And then I actually did it! I opened a crimson portal! Oh, oh god, no. Sam! <laughs> Sam, no! He sensed Jester's spirit staring at you. Closer. Well, that is an ominous. Great. 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 Oh, Nora. Oh, no, Nora. I Nora. Was no, Why is Nora near the fire? I don't like this. I mean,. You found her in fire, right? Well, that was a mood shift. Welcome to my entire personality. Am I taller than someone? You are. Like, actually, holy shit! Yeah, yeah, you actually are. You're taller than Nora. It's a miracle. The difference Fuck between you. you and her, she actually can split herself up like Osbius. <laughs> um, she typically does this, yeah. Yeah, Ghosty, you got this. <clears throat> How is his name said? Malachite. Malachite! Okay. Malachite! Where are you? Nice. There goes <laughs> all of my audio being peaked. Bro, did Atticus <gasps> just find his corner of the world to chill at now? He's just chillaxing. A piece of Dan's shirt is still stuck in Atticus' <laughs> teeth. He's napping. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh -huh. What the he fuck was happened, man? On, he was sitting on the cotton, and I needed to get cotton to, you know, make shit, and he wouldn't move, so I decided to, you know... Nudge him with the stick and it didn't work out well. Don't nudge him with the stick. That's the worst option. That's the worst. He's like, if I use a stick, that means I'm not in biting range. And then he realized that he was still I'm in, in fact biting range. In biting range. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn and Florence are making casual conversation. We can't read that. It's... Oh shit! Wait, is this the? Yeah, this is the this. Yeah, this. Ooh, cool. cool. Okay, here we go. You all approach the ritual site where Morgana. Mona, Ciara, Nyx, Blake, and Candy. I don't see Candy. I'm, <laughs> I'm gathered with London. <laughs> Ava's pearl has been carefully placed on the central pedestal. London glances back at you all. Good morning, everyone. I hope that you... She pauses, staring at Rex. Are you alright, Rex? You look exhausted. Rough night. It's the usual. Oh, more of those nightmares. I see. You know, if they're still bothering you, I could... Okay, this is all nice and cute or whatever, but can we get back to finishing the ritual? I swear the spirit child keeps looking at me and it's freaking me out. I don't believe she likes you very much, dear. Judging by this energy I'm sensing from the spirit, I believe it's safe to say she's not very fond of your presence. How many more times many? do I gotta say what the I'm fuck? sorry to what it? How many more times do I gotta say I'm sorry to it? I didn't mean to rip its soul out of it and shove it into the abyss. Candy, you're, you're not helping your case here. You're <laughs> making it worse. I saw a C and an A, and I went Ciara. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should be wearing my glasses right now. I am extra, <laughs> like, fucking not good right now. Zooted. Did London- did London- oh fuck, it's gonna be one of those streams. <laughs> we got this. I've already told you I've had a day today, alright? Bear with me, Chad. If my acting isn't top-notch, I apologize. It's always top-notch. I never get the opportunity to actually prepare myself for the stream whatsoever, so we're just here. <clears throat> oh, did Rex not explain it to you? After our meeting regarding Void Seer Pearls about a week ago, Rex made a deal with the Voidal Spirit, Ava. In exchange for her freedom, all she had to do was locate another Voidal Spirit named Milo. And while he and a couple other vessels went on that field trip, it was up to me and these people. Candy looks over at the two covens and visibly shivers. She's clearly intimidated. <laughs> to, uh, try and figure out a way to free her. Yeah, and thanks to Ava's Pearl, we did actually manage to find Milo. And capture her pearl. That's with Nyanel. 
we assist to this vessel, Candy, in setting up the ritual site for the purification and the release of the spirit, while myself and my sisters search for the spirit's original form. However, it took longer than we anticipated to find it, given the vague directions we received. Apologies for the wait. Looks like you've still found it. What now? Ah! What happened to you being in peak condition? Have you not found out by now that my ego is fake? <laughs> Heather Marie, thank you for following. No, oh, that. <laughs> nice follow up. Now, with the spirit in the Pearl in Ark's possession, we may begin the ritual to free her. <laughs> yeah, let's just uh, free Ava! No biggie! You seemed rather prepared to free her after our meeting all those days ago. I was prepared, quote unquote, all those days ago, but now we're actually doing it, so forgive me if I'm just a little bit nervous. It's okay to be nervous. We'll be right here to help. Okay. Are we sure this is a good idea? <laughs> Ben. <laughs> this is why Ben is mod. <laughs> <laughs> this is on Rex's orders. I'm certain he wouldn't ask us to prepare this ritual if you didn't think it was a good idea. Hmm. You have quite the faith in quite a bit of faith in the Dread's intelligence, don't you? As do I, Ciara. Considering your previous transgressions against him, I believe it would be wise for you to reconsider your phrasing. After all, he had the intelligence and the strength to defeat your entire coven. As he did yours, Morgana. Do try to lower your pedestal before you hit your head, hmm? That's enough. Look, I made a deal and I intend to keep it. Start the ritual. Hi, is this a roleplay? <laughs> Pretty much, it's not an SMP. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> hey, roleplay. Woo. Candy gulps a bit, taking a step back. All right, let's just do this, I guess. Carefully, she'd begin to Fortnite default dance. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Candy. Out of every kick that I could ever meme, it's Candy NPC form. I can make her do anything by misreading. Anyway, carefully, yeah. she would place several crystals on the pedestal surrounding Ava's pearl. The projection of the voidal spirit watches with an unimpressed expression as Mona would carefully connect each of the crystals with a number of runic patterns. Dan would recognize these patterns as charms. What do those charms mean? You'll never find out, Dan. Those charms are far more advanced than the ones that you and Evelyn use. Although I have no doubt that Evelyn is capable of learning them, should you require them. They're protective measures, as well as empowerment charms, that shall ensure that nothing escapes the ritual, and that the power of the crystal holds firm. Ava's a child. Ghosty. Oh. Okay, thank you. Uh, you say that like I'm planning on leaving. Evil like child. Witch. Fucking whore! <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> What's an evil child sound like? Uh, uh. You say that like I'm planning on leaving, Light Witch. I'm not going anywhere except out of this damn crystal, so hurry up! Good. Hold your tongue, spirit. Do not speak that way to the coven matriarchs. Meanwhile, Ciara would take a couple of potions out of a satchel at her side, pouring the potions over the pearl carefully, before stepping out of the ritual circle, being sure to avoid smudging any of Mona's runes. Those potions. Did... Uh, Maya make them? They shall loosen the energy present within the pearl for a... better extraction. She places her hands on her hips, Nix, if anything escapes this ritual, you are to destroy it immediately. Yes, matriarch. Mona, I want you to stay close and watch carefully, alright? Yes, matriarch. Let's just get this over with. Let's just get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> 
Candy would take out her personal Thamo Namakon. Over her shoulder, you can see all of the scribbled notes and bookmarks she's kept in it over years of study. She holds a hand out to the ritual and begin to read out of the book. You have no idea what she's saying, as her words wouldn't be in English. You can make out a couple of phrases here and there. For Rex, you'd recognize these phrases from your occult studies or your research on dark magic. For Dan, you'd recognize them from your lessons with Morgana. Pieces of words would be similar to the runic language she taught you. Uh, what's she saying? What's she, what's she, she's shit-talking you. Lorem <laughs> ipsum, uh, yeah, that's Ghosty all I got. Ghosty is Lorem a ipsum. fucking dumbass. Ghosty <laughs> is a fucking dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Dorime. Ameno, ameno, ashite. I haven't bothered learning. Don't distract her, okay? Morgana and Ciara would walk forward to stand alongside Candy, offering their own power as Candy continues to read from the book and chant. You notice the crystals within the ritual site begin to glow. I've waited eons for this. It's been actual months. Candy probably ever even forgot the first time it happened. You know, I reminded of her occasionally. What but are you? it's S I T E, not S I G H T. Oh God! Oh, it's God. peak all over again. <laughs> no, no, don't bring that peak, bro. It's sagged all over again. You don't understand no. the English language at all. No. S I T E. I thought the first one was a typo, but now that I see it a second time, I know that you're a fool! Ah, uh, Candy Queen blasting up again! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord. Uh, she knows a Latin and yet she can't speak English. What a fucking Dude, bozo. I don't know Latin anymore! <laughs> Say a Latin word right now! Um, Dolores of some Doket. <laughs> what the fuck did you just call me? See? Proven. You notice the crystals no, wait. then the No, I can't say a word in Latin. Rex! <laughs> you notice the crystals within the Oh my god, it just hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Please, for the love of I'm starting over! Morgana and Ciara walk forward to stand alongside Candy, offering their own power as Candy continues to read from the broken chant. You notice the crystals within the ritual site would begin to glow. And before your eyes, a multicolored bubble would form around the entire ritual site. Ava would look at the walls around her before looking back at you all. Ha! I can't believe it! You're actually freeing me from this pearl. I'll be honest, I was doubting it for some time. But now, because of you idiots, I can- However, the voidal spirit would pause as she looks down at her hand. Munching as her skin would begin to crack, and her dark colors would practically melt off her body in a shady mist. What's happening to her exactly? We're fulfilling the deal. What? And yeah, I thought I talked about this on stream before, but... Whenever I named myself, I didn't fully get the, the notion behind the name. You know, whenever I first made it when I was super young, but Rex is Latin for kings. Every single time someone calls me Rex in Latin, they're calling me king. Anyway. G hey, wait a second! What are you doing to me? Damn it! She hisses at you all, trying to rush forward. However, her form would simply slam into the barrier created by the crystals, which keep her from advancing toward any of you. You said this ritual was framing me! Why is it draining my power? She looks down as both of her hands would continue to desaturate and her power is drained from her form, as though a dark shell were being peeled back. Well, maybe I wasn't quite clear with my statement in our deal, Ava. I said I was going to free you, and I meant you. What the hell are you talking about? The instructions that Rex gave all of us were not to release your voidal spirit from the abyss. In fact, it was to free Ava's soul. The original spirit soul that the darkness corrupted. You are not Ava. You are a dark and negative shell that surrounds and imprisons her soul. If I were you, I would hurry up and disappear and give this poor ghost her soul back. No. No! You can't do this to me! Damn it! I think they just did. <laughs> it's 
why you get shit in writing. You <laughs> dive in little shit. I'm just fulfilling my end of the bargain, just like I made it. I mean, yeah, you technically are. They're, you're not breaking the deal by doing this. The voidal projection would slam at the barrier, causing Mona to jump. You notice that the crystals would shudder and tremble from their place on the pedestals every time the spirit balls her fists and punches to free herself. Blake would narrow her eyes and quickly rush her- wait, yeah. Blake would narrow her eyes and quickly rush around, ensuring none of the crystals fall off the pedestals. Notice that Candy would stumble over her words for a moment, too. And Ciara and Morgana would go quiet as they focus on containing the spirit as the ritual purifies the dark shell surrounding the innocent soul. Come on, just a little more. I can't watch this. Come on, it's so close. Don't mess this up now! My ears are with Ghosty and Rex. What'd you expect? Like I said, I have like gain limitation. Ghosties is uncapped for some reason. <laughs> so I had to turn down my. I don't know mom. why she doesn't have a noise gate. I have no like, idea Ghost, what happened there. Ghost is just a gremlin child. The spirit with, without the spirit within wails and cries, screaming to the heavens at such a pitch that it takes you all by surprise. Don't even think about it. You cover your ears as Candy's chanting would quicken to finish the ritual. The darkness would crack around Ava's form, causing her entire body to begin to fracture and leak into a dark mist which pools around at her stumbling feet much like a liquid would. The darkness and tendrils crawls from the claws in the inside of the light ritual, and some of it would threaten to move under the barrier entirely. However, Nyx would rush around and blast the mist back inside with a gauntlet, ensuring that it doesn't escape as the crystals would glow brighter and brighter. Purification is almost done. Everyone, shield your eyes! Yeah, fuck it, okay! A beacon of light shoots up from the ritual site. <laughs> sight, and a surge of magic would mix and harmonize with the dying screams of the ghostly child. Until everything calms down once more, and the beacon vanishes, and the crystals deactivate and fall to the pedestals uselessly, while Candy would pant, and Morgana and Ciara would stumble back. Within the oh ritual, Ava would be gone, leaving nothing but a single glowing light. Light of a star. Oh. What? I didn't know what to expect, but it wasn't that. <laughs> Rex just absolutely bamboozled Ava. <laughs> it's just wordplay. Oh, I told her I would free Ava. That's not Ava. The formless yeah. spirit, which had remained further away from the ritual until now, would hover toward forward through each of you beginning to mingle with the star. The moment it makes contact, you watch as the misty formlessness of the spirit would melt away, and the familiar young ghost girl would stand before you all. Dark tears fall down her cheeks as she looks around. No longer evil. Hi. A I crashed. Ava? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm voicing Ava now. No, Danny's! Oh, hi. Because Dan sounds adorable. Aw, thank you. I see how it is, I leave. <laughs> always do the fine print and always read between the lines, boys. Yeah, always read your contract. Did you ever do that in, like, fucking elementary school? Where like, you know, <laughs> kids like, hey, read between the lines, and then they hold up three fingers all next to each other? No. <laughs> I fucking wrote a contract in third grade with my mom, that was fun. Loser. She looks down at herself and smiles shyly. Mm-hmm. Eva, that was my name a long time ago. Oh, God. Candy walks forward, tossing her book aside. Okay, uh, it's fine. Um, uh, listen, Ghost Ava, I think I may or may not, maybe, probably, almost definitely owe you an apology, don't I? Oh, God, it's a ghosty line. I got it, I'm back. She's a ghost? Like, the voidal spirit is gone? I need a haircut. Ava nods. I can go back to reading her, right? Yeah. Yes. That ritual rid my soul of the dark shells surrounding it. The form that you all knew as Ava was nothing but a negative parasite that formed around my soul in the abyss after so long. Corrupting me and who I once was. 
but thanks to you, that shell is gone now. I'm free to be myself again. She spins around happily. I'll admit, I had my doubts, but it seems to have worked out well. Doubts? What do you mean? No rules against invisible ink. Hmm. <laughs> Just imagine, like, having someone sign a contract and you're just like, Ah, oh, I see you've agreed, and then you just, like, shine a black light over that. <laughs> yeah! Had that gone on any longer, I'm rather certain it would have failed. It was not an easy process in the slightest. In fact, it was rather draining on my abilities to empower such a purification as that. Agreed. It was far too difficult to be repeatable. I almost fucked that up so many times you don't even want to know. Mm. Good to know. Well, either way, good work for now. You guys can take a break. And there, it's a kid. Oh, God, oh my God. It's so weird seeing this. A child. Yeah, and Ghosty is... <laughs> Ghosty is slightly taller than her. I can't see. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm wondering how Lily's gonna react to this. Hey, we're both. Yeah, who knows? Okay. I need to stretch real quick. Uh, how, that's sorted, I guess, but it's not exactly the outcome I was hoping for. I mean, well, in a way, it to... was, but I was hoping it would have been a little bit easier. Mm hmm. Okay, now, so let's, well, we let's just take a moment to kill Cam for burying the roadmap, the number one rule that no one should do. You know? Like, uh, I will... you know we gotta point that out, that Cam is the worst! That anyway, is that there anyone else to talk to, or are we already- nope, there's our host. <laughs> <laughs> just saw him materialize, I looked down for a second and then- Oh, no wonder it's buffering! Host. Because I have, like, Wi-Fi limitations because I had a power saving mode turned on. Turn off! Okay, there we go. Vessels, Jesus. you're needed in the meeting hall immediately, please. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what came over me. God, I hate you so God much. <laughs> I just I don't know what. Danny Dot Astrid, thank you for the raid. Welcome, the raiders. Danny. And here we are. I'm safe. I'm Dad. You're on the one side of the tape, whatever. <laughs> Someone can sit across from me, goddamn. I'm keeping my distance from Lucy right now. Here, G Ghosty's the only one that wouldn't get punched. Yeah, say hi. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Ghosty would be the only one. And so people go and check out that VOD, you know, whenever you guys go get the chance, be sure to check out that VOD. <laughs> There's a reason why I sit on this side of the table. I punched meeting. <laughs> I pulled the Lily. <laughs> Rex's voice about to die after these streams. Yep, he's gonna have to. You're gonna get a well deserved rest. Yeah, canonical. Right. Yeah, no, like behind the scenes, every single time Mythos stream ends, I join call and be like, Someone's working on the roadmap for the next one. Yeah, every time years. a stream ends, I feel like I'm working out the next one with like a dude who just smoked for the last 50 years. <laughs> I have to use a text to speech and it's like, Gandhi, that idea is bullshit. <laughs> like the TikTok. Thank you for the hydrate. Candy, oh that idea is total bullshit. I hate how well you do that. That's actually scary. I hate how dumb you are. You all seat yourselves at the table with the other members of the War Council already gathered together. Our host watches you all sit down before clearing his throat. <clears throat> Thank you for agreeing to meet with us on such short notice vessels. I do apologize for the impromptu nature of this meeting, truly. Uh, what's it about our house? Like, what's up? I believe it's about time that we consider our further actions. Given the information Rex gave us a week ago regarding uh, the All-Knower's Ascension, excuse me, I had a fajita for lunch. It seems that Rowan Pierce is truly keen on utilizing voidal spirits to pull him further out of the void. Particularly, the voidal spirit known as Jester. Shit! I forgot Lily isn't here. And yeah, given how much question. worse these nightmares are getting, I'm gonna assume it's going pretty well for them. Agreed. Yeah, we need to work on stopping him, and fast. I've increased the speed at which my paladins are advancing on edict bases. 
The Indo-Conglomerate has managed to overtake several bases of communication in the past week in an attempt to gain more information regarding this ascension. Even a potential date for the project's completion would be of use to us in such times. Unfortunately, we've come up empty-handed. I'm guessing there's not much we can really do to stop this unless we somehow manage to stop Jester himself. Wolf pauses. Ritual to purify Eva was scheduled to happen today, right? How'd that go, boss? <sighs> it was tough. I'm not sure if we'll be able to replicate it, and even if we could, it was tough to keep Ava contained. Someone with Jester's level of power? I'm not sure if it'll work. <sighs> Damn it. Oh, fuck. Besides, even if we could replicate it, how would we do that when we don't have Jester's Void Seer Pearl or whatever? Don't we kind of need that, too? Yeah, this is Rex's stream. Oh, my God. It's like, I can voice Iris if you want. Or... No. Okay. You could, but just because you asked, no. <laughs> 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 yes, however, it will be practically impossible to get our hands on it. After all, Rowan carries it with him practically everywhere. And when it's not on his person, it's mounted in a Lacan fortress. Wait, Iris. Can't you just tell us where the fortress is now? Like, is that card on the table? Well, I would love to tell you. I'm afraid not even I'm aware of the fortress's location. There are very few who know the coordinates of the fortress. The rest of us must rely on methods of transportation to see it for ourselves. Let me guess. One of those people is alienist. Correct. <laughs> of fucking course. Is there a way we could get Aeliness to tell us or something? Her? Tell us? <laughs> Funny joke. She doesn't listen to anyone but Rowan. And now, apparently, the new Ignis, too. <sighs> I still don't get how they managed to replace me so quickly. Both in terms of rank and in terms of intellect. How did she manage to build Machina? Dressly not found. Thank you for following. She turns to all of you, leaning forward. I read over those construction logs you brought back, and she talked about stuff that I don't even think my mom has ever been considered. Using souls as a backup power supply for core functionality, but an electrical heart for sentience? That's crazy! We always knew she was a genius. And now we know that she's also a savant. Hmm. Uh, hold up. What's a savant, folks? It's a person who was blessed or something to the extent that the god of knowledge himself can communicate with them and help them get smarter or something like that. My mom was a savant once upon a time until she finished making the East Haven cyber soldiers. After that, the god stopped talking to her. She said it was because she finished her greatest work, so she left. Her, so he left her to focus on young minds. Yeah, I think like a uh, Lily. She's a savant, right? Huh. And Biden sure has some weird tastes, if you ask me. Sure, I could see him going to Lily. I mean, she was building up Vanguard and all that, right? She fit the criteria for savant making. But this new Ignis? Doesn't she seem a little crazy? <laughs> You're one to talk. I don't see you savanted up here either, murmur. Shut up! Don't say that name! Do you hear me? Whoa, okay, maybe we take a chill pill or something? What? I overheard Alienist call you that in Ravengard, like, almost a month ago. You're trying to tell me you prefer the enemy bullying you over me? I'm not fucking joking, Tabitha. Don't call me that. Mirror, bud. It's okay. It's just a nickname. Why does Alienist call you that, Mirror? Mirror hesitates. Alienus made up that dumb nickname for me back when I was just a kid in the edict. Used to make me laugh after, you know, all the bad stuff. Now it just makes me sick. And scowls. I used to think that maybe a part of her cared about me. I used to think that maybe a part of her cared about me, because she actually was kind of nice to me when the rest of the edict treated me like dirt. That I was just too dumb to see that she doesn't care about anything but Rowan. Uh, I mean, when you told her not to give it to him, you know, so well. 
She looked kind of sad. Sad? <laughs> no way. I doubt it. There's no way I changed her mind. She's gonna find that so well eventually and hand it over to Rowan. She's a piece of shit like that. There's silence for a moment before London would clear her throat. <clears> throat> We're getting off topic. Our focus should still be on finding a way to stop the Ulnar's ascension. With the information that the Ulnar has taken the form of a Voidal Spirit, we need to find a way to either defeat this Voidal Spirit somehow before they make it to Rem, or we find a way to take their Voidal void Seer Pearl, which remains in Rowan's hands. But how do we defeat Jester, though? He doesn't even exist in this realm yet. If I had a nickel for every single time someone in the fan server and in the production server simped for Ignis, I would have like. You'd, you'd be, be rich. Yeah, you would be. I was going to count it life. up, you know, and not be like hyperbolic about it. I was about to be like 10 or like 12 or something like that. But no, it's just a shit ton that I've lost count. Anyway. Wolf, you think you could use the Chaos Dimension to fix him or something? Fi Holy shit, I'm tired. Do you think you could use the Chaos Dimension to find him or something? <sighs> Probably not. The Chaos Dimension can move through realms, similar to how Crimson Portals work. I can travel through space quicker and appear in a totally different part of realm within seconds by your perception. If I could move through realms too, then I would have done it by now to find my daughter. And not to be that guy, but I doubt the all is just going to wait around for us in whatever realm he's in so we can find him there. He's still climbing as we speak. So it looks like the only option would be taking Jester's pearl. But the problem still stands. How do you do that, folks? If it's in Rowan's pocket, then that means you have to find a way not only to get close enough to Rowan Pierce, but to get close enough to take it from him. The last time he stood within that proximity, I almost... Followed him once more. His aura is practically impossible to ignore, even now. Miley not being here is killing me right and now. And I seem to recall yeah, that, that even the all-powerful vessels were no match for him. Hmm? Rexiver can hardly stand being in the same room as Rowan Pierce. Not bitch enough. We need Lily. She's the only bitch I know. Fuck. <laughs> No, I thought I was bitch enough. I can't breathe when Rowan's around. It's like he's sucking all of the air out of the room. You're sure boosting my confidence here, folks. Love to hear it. Ugh. There has to be some good news here. Some plan we can come up with. Come on, let's just put our brains together, folks. Anything? I do have one idea. But you're not going to like it. Dialogue pauses one more time. I'm about to pull Gangster's Paradise and start it. ascending. I have the Go see the I protagonist? Oh god, I this world's it, ending. Too. Oh I shut up, Cam. Yeah, I have it, yeah. What the fuck, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be on my side! Look, I I had no choice. Men the get it done! Up. That's the saying! Dialogue up. <laughs> they all turn toward you curiously. There's something on your mind, Rex Viter. Why is it that you always seem to have some kind of idea while the rest of us are fumbling around in the dark, huh, folks? I don't remember you always being this secretive. Rex? What are you attempting to imply? If Alienus and Rowan are out of the question, then Ignis is kind of sounding like our last option. It'd be a Nova does gaming. Nova does gaming! Gaming does Nova. Holy shit, you're in Mythos yeah, SMP? No way. <laughs> Holy shit! I'm about to chuck Tabby in a timeout chair. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> You'll always be a bitch enough in our hearts in a good way. Actually, fun fact, Thanks, so Royal. Ghosty can see over the top of the table. She has to have a booster seat in her chair. There's a moment of stunned silence. Ignis, how in the name of the gods did you come up with that conclusion? You informed us that Ignis was the mastermind behind Machina, whose purpose was to take the souls of the villagers who drowned in its eternal storm. Why would she possibly tell us of Rowan's whereabouts, or how to stop Project Ascension? How do we know if she even has any of that information? 
She's a genius, and Rowan seems to keep her in the know about a lot of things. Odds are she's going to know his location, too. Thank you for the hug. This dialogue freezes. <coughs> Uno mas. Feels like that's all the more reason to avoid her, if you ask me. What makes you think she'll talk to you, Rex? Because in the past, she's made deals with me. Maybe she'll be willing to make another. Still, to give away the leader of the Alacrim Edict, what price would you have to pay for that information if she's even willing to give it? In Gaia, she seems so confident in her capabilities to outmatch you vessels, and in the end, she still managed to escape the colony. But she abandoned Victus in the process. And she never liked Cain. She kept secrets from him. And he was another Supreme. Hello, do. Thank you for the stretch. No shrimp then. Uh-huh. So, you're trying to say that maybe she's not as loyal to the Edict as she lets on. Ignis was always an enigma. Even when something did not seem to go her way, somehow she would anticipate the outcome and adapt from it. She would always seem to find the right path to take. The path that would turn her failure into a small victory. Ha! Lovely. I'm not intimidated in the slightest. I thought you were the genius behind the Alacrim Edict, Lamia. What happened to that? I'm starting to think I wasn't very good at my job. Maybe we could persuade her to act against Rowan himself. Long shot, but... Yeah, that's a very long shot. Could work. Theoretically. I don't know these people and I'm doubting it. Thanks, Ghosty. That's still a risk. Besides, how would you even manage to contact Ignis to make this deal? It's a greater that has close ties with her. Greater ritualist of Orum. Lucy would pause in her seat, quickly looking up at you with narrow eyes. Rex, isn't that the man you told me about? The one who... She pauses, glancing in Lucia's direction for just a split second. Lucy would catch this, however, and snap at her. What does that look mean, hmm? Nothing. Nothing at all? That's the rituals you told us about. Right, Rex? Mm. Guys, I can't stop thinking about the thought of being funny. I'm just too funny. Who was the, yeah, wh who was it? Like, I feel like it was someone in call with me. They were just like laughing. I'm just like, man, do you guys just crack yourselves up with the idea of being funny? <laughs> I can't say I've ever heard of an Orum. Same here. And then again, I don't know a lot of things. Yeah, that's sort of why we haven't been asking you. I don't see you giving any insightful commentary. I literally got us to this topic of conversations, okay? Like, we wouldn't be here if I didn't pull us back here. That's enough. Rex, I don't know if this plan is safe. Probably not. That's why I'm going alone. I know I sound like a broken record with that, but given the pushback I got with our last endeavor, I feel like this might be the avenue. Like to mention immediately, someone said, God damn it, Rex, in my chat. What do you think I gave the, the, the two hand snap finger guns? Because I know that this is just. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm afraid that's a request I cannot allow. She stands up defiantly. I won't let you go to such a place alone. Not again. You told me what that man was capable of. What he's done, and what he even attempted to do. <sighs> I'm going with you, whether you like it or not. London. Hello, what did I miss? Hello, Dragon King! Greetings. 
It's we're halfway through the week. What a hype moment. Thanksgiving is next week. Can you believe it, guys? Oh, <laughs> God, I have five days off. <laughs> Five days to like fucking be okay. And the rest of the Turkey. table all glance at one another. I have to agree with Miss Remington. Why exactly do you have to go alone on this one, boss? No, only one of us would be more than willing to accompany you. Lucia says nothing. Oh, trust me when I say that this man is dangerous and kind of already bargained that I wouldn't bring others there. So this way, I'm kind of not violating that. So we're not suffering the repercussions of whatever that would entail. If I'm going to make a deal, it's kind of like, you know, a non-starter to immediately violate an original deal. You know what I mean? Your promise will simply have to be adjusted. I'm not letting you leave this place alone. And what about the rest of us, huh? You really just expecting us to sit around and wait for you to come back from a deal that could end up killing you both? Logistically speaking, it would make more sense if we did something else while Rex is gone, so we don't just end up wasting precious time. Is there any other leads we got, folks? Hmm. You have an idea, Arhos? Yeah, give me like five minutes to articulate it. Completely fair, Arhos. Take your time. Yeah, Arhus, it's not like Number a... one for three AL. You guys don't have the dialogue <laughs> to get down. I have the dialogue. Oh my god. You have no opinion because you are two foot tall. Can we punt her to East Haven? You are in the same boat. I can walk to East Haven. Perhaps. Fine. Recall what I said about the layered realms theory. Again, what has yet to be proven to be true, it is theorized that this world is made in some ways as a pyramid. It's made up of several realms that are capable of stacking on top of one another. In this way, there are realms that are stuck between the void and our world. Rem. What's this got to do with anything? You already told us that. Well, theoretically, if the owner was being transported through a voidal spirit, up all these layers and into Rem, that would imply he'd have to go through the nether before he goes through Rem. Okay, so... While Rex investigates this deal opportunity, we can look around the nether. That's actually a great idea. We could figure out where we could set up a front line if we can't get to Rowan Pierce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a... Yeah, plan ahead. Yay, the nether. Sure, ghosty. Take me to your Xbox Play for I mean, if Jester the All-Knower, whoever is supposed to go there first, wouldn't that mean that the Edict would be preparing for his arrival already in the nether? Maybe we can catch them at his emergence point or something and make plans to fight him before he even makes it up to our realm. Precisely. Is that a marshy dialogue? That's a marshy That's dialogue. A That's a marshy. Can't not read that woman. I, I guess I'll do it. Um, not a bad idea. Wait, are the highways and another still active? According to our reconnaissance, they are. We've managed to locate several stations that held active nether portals into portions of the expanded Alacrim highways. Presumably, Jesus Christ, presumably the nether highways continue to act as a means of transport for larger troops or materials across Rem. So what I'm hearing is we're going to raid the highways and look for signs of the all-knower's arrival down there? You know, he's coming up through the nether, where else would they plan to meet him? Or how else would they plan to transport him into Realm? Realm? Rem. It's a shot in the dark, but... It's not a horrible plan B. Well, then what are we waiting for then? Let's go! All right then. Well, Rex and I attempt to speak with this Ignis. You should all focus on investigating the Nether for any signs of the all knowers ascension into that realm. Might even have a station you can try hitting. It's once known as Station A. It lies to the northeast of here. Now, apparently, it's transformed into some sort of training station. But from what I've heard, Portals into the highways are still active below ground. Okay, then. Arhos, I want you to go with them. Dan, you should talk to Bestia, too. She might be a good addition. I shall not veil you, vessels. Let us fight side by side to protect this world once more. However, as the meeting would begin to wrap up, he would not be able to stop himself from staring at Lucia. He would look down at the table, lost in thought. I guess we should, uh, go talk to Bestia then. 
Yep, we can do that. Uh, yeah, you guys go ahead and get on that. I'm gonna start getting ready to head out. Okay, yeah. Cool. Sorry, fucking, I swear to God, I... It is in my character now to want to not do shit on my own, believe me. Alright, promise. Namaste. This seems like the most efficient way of getting shit done. I'm not arguing. I'm just gonna say don't get yourself killed, asshole. <laughs> just be careful. Hey, they already failed okay. once. I doubt they'll figure it out this time. Okay, please. I mean, fair on that. Just be careful, okay? Well, different people have tried more than once, but I'm saying this specific group of people have already tried once, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eat lots of food on your journey. Well, I guess, good luck, and I guess we'll see you when you get back. Yep. Okay. Let's go find beast. <laughs> oh, server lag, okay. Hello. Greeting. Rex has got enough development to admit he needs help, but not enough to admit he's wrong consistently. <laughs> yeah, that sums that up. He's done it quite a few times recently. That's true, yeah. I can think of one instance, a really important instance, where Rex went, I'm sorry. You approach Lucy after the meeting. Her eyes remain on the table, and her body would be rather tense and still. You would stand next to her chair for what feels like an eternity, before she would sigh. What? Lucia. She growls. Oh, spit it out, Vessel! What do you want? She looks up at you quickly, her expression unreadable. Do you want to come with me? I don't think I'd be violating the rules by bringing you. Her brow froze in surprise. Go with you? Didn't you say that you saved me from that clinic? Yeah, but you also told me that you didn't need saving from there. So now you choose to respect my wishes. After you harassed me for weeks, claiming to know me and care about me. She cuts herself off, shaking her head. You're not making any sense whatsoever. You said that you would help me to trust you and I understand you, but I'm no closer than I was weeks ago. Why would you possibly want me to go with you on this mission of all things? She narrows her eyes. Or are you hoping that bringing me back to the clinic will convince me of your story, Rex Viter? That's not what I'm getting at at all. Then what are you getting at? Are you expecting me to gain some sort of closure? Then I'll magically change my opinions of you, Vessels, if I return to the clinic. She stands up moving closer to you and jabbing a finger into your chest. Do you realize that if I find out you've been lying to me, I will kill you, right? That's fine. I've got nothing to hide. She stares at you in shock for some time. Her eyes attempting to read your face and reveal your secrets. But when she finds none, she just clears her throat. <clears throat> Fine, then. If you're so desperate to speak with me personally after that meeting, I suppose I can go with you. Glad to have you on board. Let's just do this. And Florence isn't going to be able to bring us there by means of Crimson Portal, because part of the deal is I can't give away those coordinates, so... Looks like I'm walking on foot with... London and Lucy, oh god, okay. No, this is, this is fine, I'll, like, I can... This will be okay.
God, this is going to be a long walk. But at least I remember the direction. This is the place. Oh, I never thought that I'd be coming back here. Let's just get this over with. And hopefully my plan doesn't fall through. I'm kind of kicking the hornet's nest with this move, but I can't think of anything else. Fuck it. Guess they don't feel the need to station anyone out front anymore. <sighs> oh god, I forgot how unsettling this place was. Yeah, huh? yeah, just put down the sword. Pull it. Yup, yup. Wow, I'm here. Just cool yourselves. They all have dialogue to. What? No way! You lied to me. Right click doesn't. Wait, a vessel? What the hell are you doing here, huh? Cool it. Put down the hands. A, a vessel? What are you doing here, huh? No, oh, you're just saying a lot of what that guy was saying. How about you? I came for a sore throat. Now I'm being told that the head doctor will want to see me? Freaking out a little bit. Something wrong with me? Uh, yeah, definitely. Hello. <laughs> what the fuck? That's a trash can! <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> Put me in the dialogue, boss. 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 There you go. You walk up to the receptionist, so she'd be taking notes in her journal. As you approach, she glances up at you and smiles. Ah, hello again, Max Vater. Lovely weather, isn't it? You remember me, huh? Of course I do. I remember all of our guests. She would lean forward. What is the reason for your visit, may I ask? <sighs> Want to schedule a checkup with my doctor? The guy in charge. Yeah. <laughs> 
gotta vibrate, you know what I mean? <laughs> Number one victory royale, think something Fortnite, we're about to get down. A check up with Dr. Orem, hmm? Let me look at his availability. She would turn around, standing and walking to a small shelf behind the desk. She would pull a book off the shelf and begin to flip through the pages. Hmm. November 13th, 14th, 15th. Ah! November 16th. Hmm. It looks like our head doctor is rather busy today. However, I'm certain once said he hears it's you making an appointment, he'd be more than happy to fit you into his schedule. Great. Dorito! <laughs> oh god, I started doing the ee -e 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 randomly. My family's giving me weird looks. Hey, you ever just like lock up your limbs and then just start vibrating and going ee? -e -e -e? <laughs> she would close the book and put it back before walking next to her communication crystal, tapping it three times and clearing her throat. <clears> throat> Paging Dr. Orem. There's a guest here to see you for a checkup. His voice responds from the crystal. Name? Rex Fitter. The vessel? There's silence for some time before you hear Orem clear his throat. <clears throat> I shall be down in five minutes. Give me a moment, Jolene. Of course, Dr. Orem. Hmm. More Doritos. <laughs> Should I make that a redeem? <laughs> Feed Rex Fitter a Dorito and just aggressively snatch it and eat it. <laughs> she looks back up at you. You can go ahead and have a seat in the waiting room, all right? Dr. Orm will see you shortly. Oh, and if you can fill out this document while you're at it? Why do I hear like I'm juggernauts wanting to throw hands? <laughs> uh-huh. Wait, is there actually a document for me to fill out? No, okay. Oh, shit. Hang on. Talk to some one-offs. What one-offs? That guy is literally running around like he wants to run his hands up. Alright. Hello, Gubia. Hello, Bundan. Gubia. Bundan. Gubia. Bundan. Gubia. Lucio would be quiet. Excellent. London would quickly sit up in the bed next to you in a panic. She scrambles off the bed. <laughs> What's wrong with this, uh, you know, picture here? Hmm? I see nothing wrong. I am always down for round two. Hello, lesser ritualist. Ah, oh, jeez. My leg is killing me. Hope the nurse will see me soon. Yikes. What about you? Hmm? What about you? You like the mouth noises, Nova? <laughs> the lesser ritualist is casually sitting around the waiting room. Is he reading a magazine? Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, he saves this place ages to fill a medication order. Ugh. Huh? Medication's important, always take it. We have a medication ready for Wesley Gunfield? We have a medication ready for Wesley Gunfield. I think that's you, boss. Just as you were complaining. Mm. Anyone else to talk to around these parts? Yeah, I can't go creeping back there. Let's see if London's got anything to say. Doritos? <laughs> That's enough of that. London looks around casually, a bit tense in the clinic location. Oh, let's just take a seat. <sighs> oh wait, sorry. Hold on. Let me just get the susness out of my um, <laughs> out of my being. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the seat taken. Great. <sighs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm fucking kidding. All right, let's see this. Name. Um... Come on, do I have to put the full thing here? I have a last name. Whatever, fine. Age. Uh, this is immediately starting to get a little personal. <laughs> um, 20. Why not? Height. <laughs> Canonically established 5 foot 10 inches. <laughs> Weight. Uh, huh. What's the a <laughs> Fuck, how much do I weigh? I can't even get a number for this one too. <laughs> We're gonna go with like I guess 140 pounds, maybe? Sounds vaguely right. Um dread. Type Ugh, demon. Using for visit. I guess this is a checkup. Oh yeah, and now I just wait, I guess. <clears throat> hmm. Guess that's me. Hey, you won't mind if I bring two with me, yeah? Guess not. Hello, Ronald. Do you hear they had doctors coming to see a vessel today? The vessel? No way! You don't think it's someone from before, right? Hello. I've got eyes and ears. Hmm. An archer in here. And a doctor. Gotta check on this. Oh shit, and there are people over there too. Gotta check on that too. I don't remember any of these doctors' voices. I'm through all the work to work that out, but you know. Fill this out right? Oh shit. I am? Damn it, this is what happens when I binge eat at the buffet back at the fortress. Hey yo, they got a buffet? I'm switching sides. We should probably talk about your weight. You over the recommended weight limit for someone of your age and height. Aw. Oh. Fortunate. You'd think they would actually be kind of in shape from, you know, working and fighting and whatever and exercising. Mill nurse is using the terminal and puts some sort of results. Let me just gaze at that. Alright, fine. <sighs> yep. Great. Cool. Ugh. Remember hating these when I was a kid. Sitting on the chair was always nerve wracking, mainly because every single time I went to the doctor, nine times out of ten, it was for a shot, and I was mortified of shots as a kid. And then at one point, I had to take a bunch of them back to back, you know. And I kind of got desensitized. Now, no, shots aren't really a big deal or anything that terrify me. They're kind of just a mild inconvenience. And it's crazy how something that can really just horrify you once you deal with it enough. It doesn't have that effect over you anymore. Fears fade the more you're exposed to said fear. And if the same could be said about me in this world. Anyway, do you two women have new dialogues or like you the same? Nope. One quickly sitting up on the bed. Yep, yeah, they're the same. That, that nurse didn't take the, the, the thing. Wasn't she supposed to take this? I'm just gonna leave it outside the door. <sighs> and so it begins. Greetings once again.
I bit on a plastic pencil and it broke and I think my tongue is bleeding. Yikes. Fortunately for you, your mouth heals pretty quickly. And by that, I mean it will heal over any form of opening rather quickly, but it's very likely that the wound will ulcerate and be extremely painful for a long time. Thumbs up. You glare at Orm as he enters the examination room. He adjusts his glasses, closing the door behind him and adjusting his lab coat. He had a clipboard in his arms and a quill behind his ear. <clears throat> Hello again, Rex. Orm. One day! It's okay, because I know that somewhere else on the other side of Ren, these bozos are also having to deal with these delays. <laughs> he walks forward toward the examination bed that, you've seated, that you're seated on, uh -uh. holding the clipboard up to read over several notes. You manage to glance at the clipboard, and you would notice that the document you wrote in and signed would be clamped into place before him. Hmm. He mutters to himself before turning back to you, setting the clipboard down. I must say, I hadn't expected you to return to my clinic, especially not for an examination. I believe Lady Ignis's deal stated that I didn't tell anyone where to find this place, and I'm not in the process of burning it down. So take what you get, yeah? gulps a bit before nodding. I see. He'd begin to fiddle with a couple of instruments on a nearby table, picking up a stethoscope and placing it into his ears. He glances back at you. If you would do me the courtesy of removing your coat. <laughs> you move the coat and hold it out toward London, who would be seated with Lucia nearby. London stares at you for a moment. And you notice her face would flush before she would shake the feeling away and gather your coat into her arms, holding on to it for safekeeping. Orm would then lean over next to you and place the stethoscope against your chest to listen to your heartbeat. And, may I ask, what was your reasoning for coming today, Rex? Medically speaking, of course. You're the professional. How about you tell me? He stares at you for some time before pulling away. Sorry, my right eye is like, the corner of it feels like there's something in it that's like stabbing me, but there's nothing there. So it's like, really irritating. He stares at you for some time before pulling away, noting down your heartbeat. Your heartbeat's far lower than your last visit. I must congratulate you. A healthy 98 beats per minute. And scribble this number down onto his clipboard. Do you have any allergies, Rex? Any to your knowledge? Nah, now grew him. Outgrew them, you say? I see. He would take a blood pressure cuff off the nearby table and motion you as he speaks. I'm going to take your blood pressure, all right? This cuff will go around your arm and will slowly inflate it. You will feel a bit of discomfort, but only for a moment. Give me your arm, please. You raise your right arm and allow him to wrap the cuff around your upper arm. He would then begin to squeeze air into the cuff, causing it to slowly inflate, while he notes down the gauge on the side and the value it would give him. He notes the value. Dame, 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 oh. Lick my eyeball? What? You overhear London mutter to Lucia. This man is Orm? He seems rather normal. He's a doctor. He's just doing his job. Lucia states simply. Orm would glance in their direction and then back toward you. He unwraps the cuff around your arm calmly and withdraws a thermometer of some kind. It would have a funneled end 
where the small tip of the funnel faces outward and attaches to some sort of strange thomic gauge. I'm going to place the end of this device into your ear to take your temperature, all right? You'll hear a small beep when it concludes its calculations. It's entirely painless, all right? Mm-hmm. I can't even lick, like, my nose. Tongue ain't long enough for that. He places the device in your ear, and after a moment, it would beep. He removes it and notes the value. 99.2 degrees. Healthy, though on the higher end of the spectrum. He notes this on the clipboard. Your vitals appear to be in order. Now then, he looks back toward you, setting the clipboard aside. Why did you come to my visit my clinic, Rex? I want to talk to Agnes. And I also wanted every dialogue to pause after every time I speak. <sighs> I'm afraid that won't be possible. <clears throat> well, I expect your respect your willingness to return here civilly. I'm afraid that your request is simply out of the question. Lady Agnes is quite a busy woman. It would be unwise of me to interrupt your activities. If there's anything else, anything health-related, I'd be more than happy to help you as your psychiatrist. And you as my patient. Yeah, I'm not your damn patient. You became one of my patients the moment you stepped foot in my clinic. And I am here to serve my patients and ensure they are in good health mentally and physically. You sure you don't want to just try to condition me again? Do not be ridiculous, Rex Viter. Of course not. Besides, I understand that such treatment is ineffective on you. <sighs> on occasion, I will find patients that are incapable of being conditioned. Their mental fortitude exceeds my own, and therefore the treatment does not produce the desired results. Why is there a cam dialogue here? Why is it cam color? Uh-huh. You know, chat? You, you, do you know? You know? You know. You gotta know. Chat, do you know? You know. <laughs> that being said, allow me to repeat my question. Is there anything other health reason for your visit today? He pauses, looking down at your arm. It appears your wounds from your previous visit have healed nicely. I would like to make note of this star tissue here. I'm not fucking around, Orum! You rush forward, grabbing Kingslayer from its sheath and holding it to its throat. His eyes widen at the movement, and his body goes motionless. Rex! Lucia would stand up, but London places a hand on her shoulder, much to Lucia's irritation. She ma smacks London's hand away, but would simply stand still and watch. Get me in contact with Ignis. Or else. And you push the sword into his neck further, and you watch as he would sweat, as though he would made entirely motionless. I see. And he stares at you for some time before he would slowly bring his hands up to his glasses, adjusting them on his face. I will do what I can, Rex. <clears throat> I believe I may, in fact, have a communication crystal in my office. I'm certain I don't need to show you the way. No, I remember. London, Lucia, come on.
I want to go get chips, but I don't want to get up, then teleport and get the chips. Actually. Or I would start to put his hand up further to speak with you all. I have a caveat of my own, Rex Viter. If you wish to speak with Ignis, you will speak with her alone. I'm already breaking several rules allowing you to speak with her. So I'd prefer if it were only you. He gulps, looking down at the sword. You'll have your opportunity to speak with Lady Ignis. But you will take it alone. <sighs> you... Damn, Nova, I didn't know your follow age was that old. God damn. Oh, one day. One, one day. Rex, Lennon would say, walking forward. Just go. I can keep an eye on the man myself, and I'll make sure Lucia doesn't wander off this time. Orm glances at London, then back at you. Fine. Wait here. T Hate that bastard. It's a strange individual. He conditions people so it's undeniable that he's evil and bad. And yet he still has the right to be like, Dr. Patient Confidentiality, and I'm a licensed physician, and I only do good by my patients. Monster. Manipulative monster. Can I speak to these two people before I go upstairs, perhaps? Perhaps. What's up? The patients have been asking about her and where she's been. Not sure what to tell them. Well, what's the problem up there? Hmm. There's the cafeteria. No one in here right now? Oh, shit. Oh, Harold. The doctor said I'm making good progress. Finally. Been here for so long that I forgot to that what I originally came here for. Can't wait to get back to work for Rowan Pierce. Yeah, that's uh, not new dialogue. I guess can't even update all of them. Denji, my god. Gregory. Gregory. Probably is the same dialogue as well, so we should just like keep heading out. He told me the night. What the fuck? They both lead to the same place. Uh, food's still warm. <laughs> I'm so hungry. I feel like I was in the examination room for hours. Man begins to serve himself. Fine, I'll go the archive route. Even though I was closer to the stairs and there were people on the stairs. I guess I'll walk around. Dustin beats almost everyone. <laughs> yeah. There's some ancient people in my chat, though. It's like Lion and Dinah and like Dragon Fox. Dragon Fox have got some of like, the oldest follow ages on known to man. Like they they are entitled to be seeing your discount. <laughs> Too late. It's too late. You mopped it up. Excuse me, Jolene. Patrick. Doctor's looking through some patient files. Hmm. I think it's the only one here, because this is the staircase up. Let's make sure there's no one in this room. See, I saw the blue and I saw the green and I thought it was Steve. It's not Steve. Eliza and Peggy. The Skyler Sisters. Damn, guys, how'd you get down so fast? <laughs> Please! I'm sorry I'm yawning so much, guys. I really apologize. I've been tired all day today, but like I said, I never even got to have like a fucking break break at all. <laughs> I'm falling apart. <laughs> Nurse works at her desk. That's good for her. Said if I was a good, I could deal with God, and then get him to swap our places. Be running up that road, be running up that hill, be running up that building. 
Here we are. Time to ring up Ignis. And let's see how this ends up going. Hydrate while we wait an hour? Yeah, sure. You let me gaming, I'm doing great! Now we're gonna do some cardio. You missed quite a bit. I'm doing jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You like that? I think that was pretty good. Also, is this dialogue not gonna open? Cause it's, oh my God. I just had to complain. The crystal would glow passively for some time before eventually you would hear a voice on the other end. The voice of Ignis herself. She exhales. <sighs> now then, Aurum, what do you have to report this time? I'm quite busy, you know, and I'd prefer if you- Ignis. There's silence for some time, before you eventually hear her chuckle, and she speaks as though she has quite the grin on her face. <laughs> this is quite the surprise, isn't it? I never expected that you would return to Orm's clinic. Let alone that you would return to communicate with me. Might I ask, Rexfitter, is Orum alive? For now, unfortunately. <laughs> you can almost hear her smirking through the crystal, and it irks you to your very core. So then, to what do I owe the pleasure of this personal call? Where's Rowan hiding? Again, silence on the other side. My, my. Quite the bold demand you've made. You hear something adjust in the background. And... Why do you think I would do that? Because we're going to make a deal. Thank you for the hydrate. <laughs> You've certainly surprised me today, Rex. I'm impressed. And even more than that, I'm flattered. So many members of the Edict. And you chose to go out of your way to return to Orm's clinic just to make this deal with me. You must be quite desperate to stop his plans, hmm? I know that you only made that deal with me because Kane died. <laughs> That's really funny, Kaiba. <laughs> Glorious news, don't you think? I'm confident when I say that most of the edict celebrated that man's demise. His passing was not mourned, and I was feeling generous. What makes you think that I'm feeling nearly as generous now? You realize that the information I'd be giving you is priceless, yes? What could you possibly have to offer in exchange? It depends. What do you want? Well, I suppose there are plenty of things I want. For instance, I would quite like it if you gave yourself away. But given your recent war efforts, I can confidently say that you would never do such a thing, hmm? She thinks for some time. How about... The Archangels? What? That's a really funny race, Lord. <laughs> mm. 
Are you playing coin, Alrex? I have eyes everywhere. I know that some time ago, you somehow managed to get your hands on a group of archangels. And since then, they have been working with you in the war effort. They're not very subtle with their existence, are they? In several of your war's raids, I've received reports that they would even announce themselves to our militias. <sighs> Damn it. I think that's what Ray's Lord was saying, Flintz. <laughs> so, do you want my prize to give away, Rowan? That is my prize. I want the Archangels. If you give them to me, I shall tell you where Rowan Pierce is. It's quite simple. I wonder... Will you take it? No way in hell. I'm not handing them over. You will never get them. Just like I'll never get this like, sequential dialogue trees. God damn. Never. Hmm. Interesting answer. Thank you for the Falcon Neptune. She clears her throat. <clears> throat. The Station A, Nether Highways. What are you talking about? According to my intel, two archangels are present at this location, alongside several vessels and Indo conglomerate officials. Now that's correct, isn't it? There. What? God, God damn it, go see! With the push of a button, I could easily order an army to surround that group. If you won't hand over the archangels willingly, I can always take one or two by force. I was planning on doing that anyways. But since you're here to make a deal, then this is rather perfect, isn't it? You wouldn't. I'll get there first. It's like being cut off by air. Yeah, and it's happening all the time. Do you see this? Remember at the start of the stream when it was like bang, 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 and now it's like. <gasps> Will you? Because I'm rather confident that you won't make it in time. So then, this is your last choice. Chance. Will you accept my bargain? Or give away any chance of victory for a couple of archangels? <laughs> no. How unfortunate. You hear a click on her end. Oh, oh dear! It looks like I've made the call. Now a vast squadron of Edict Rituals will descend upon that adorable little war effort mission of yours. You bitch! Tick tock, Rex. If you want to make it in time to save them, you might want to hurry out to the clinic. Until our next dance. <laughs> God 
damn it, god damn it! Shit, shit, shit! Fuck me, I have to cross all of Mythos! Okay, it's all step one, I gotta get Lucia. Lucia in London. Fuck off. Move. Ugh. Shit, this isn't the way. What the fuck am I doing? Hmm. Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. I'm just gonna kill him. That's what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna... Not this room. This one. T what? You rush into the room quickly, but your eyes widen in horror as you see London strapped down to the medical bed, her expression empty and devoid of emotion, and Orm looking down at you with his hand on her forehead. His eyes move up to gaze at you. I take it your conversation didn't go as planned. Lucy would be missing from the room. What the fuck have you done?! He removes his hand from London's head, keeping his eyes on you. My job, Rex Fitter. I would appreciate it if you would stop interfering with it. As he moves to unstrap London from the bed, you notice there would be a glowing communication crystal directly behind him. Is he listening in on your conversation? You bastard! Let her go! And where the hell is Lucia?! As he run forward to attack Orm, however, London would spring from the bed, rushing behind you and tackling you down. You cough in surprise as you hit the ground, forced to land on your stomach as London climbs on top of you, holding you down. Hmm. <laughs> London? I... What are you doing? She looks down at you with a cold expression. Vessel scum. How do you know my name? She would scowl at you, at you, her words cutting as deep as a wound. Admittedly, the procedure was rather rushed, but it appears to have been a success nonetheless. London? No, 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 not you two! London! Please, no! Listen to me! Let go of me! Please! My apologies, Rex. This would be far less painful, I'm certain, if you could be conditioned as well. But I'm afraid I have my orders. Lady Agnes stated that you would not be allowed to leave this clinic. Therefore, I may have to take drastic measures. <clears throat> he clears his throat and walks over to the crystal, tapping upon it twice. Jolene, could you prepare the solitary confinement ward? The patient is resistant to our treatment. Hang on a goddamn minute! Of course, Dr. Oram. Jolene's voice sounds on the other side of the line. He turns back to you. I cannot let you leave, Rex Futter. Hopefully, a week in solitary confinement shall decrease your willpower enough for conditioning. You feel London's grip on your arms tighten, and a low growl from sound from her throat. London, please. Please, you, you... You have to remember me. Please, not again. I have no idea what you're talking about. She starts... You disgusting vessel. Just take your confinement like the monster you are. London, hold them until the guards arrive. I have other patients to attend to, and this appointment has continued long enough. Orm would turn his back to you all, 
and she would begin to clean the room, returning his tools to the table. You feel her fuzzy tail brush against your legs as it sways quickly behind her. You feel her hand slowly move down from your wrist toward your waist, her fingers dipping into your focus pouch and fiddling around inside. You feel London pull out a focus from your pouch, and much to your surprise, while Orm's back is turned, she would slowly lean forward and reach for your gauntlet with the focus in hand. You hear her giggle quietly as she leans down, whispering in your ear, <laughs> Try not to miss, okay? London? Shh, not so loud. She slots the spell into your gauntlet. <laughs> I'm glad you both bought my Lucia impression. I had a feeling it was pretty good. She states as the focus would click into place in your gauntlet. She stares at Orem, slowly releasing her grip over you. Make this quick, Rex. We have to get out of this place. I know it was a mistake to come here. You were right, but where's Lucia? What the fuck happened to this dialogue? Another man came in to speak with her. When I tried to tell her to stay with me, she left. But it seems they can't condition me. I suppose I'm just too clever for that. She smirks. We'll find her on our way out. Now, Rex! What was that, London? I would slowly glance back toward you. As London would slowly withdraw from her position on top of you. Or you bastard! Axe, sword, lance, staff, gauntlet. Hey, which one of these guys do you want? Huh? Should we go with axe? Should we go with sword? Should we go with lance, staff, or gauntlet? You guys got a preference here? Which one? You rise up as Orm's eyes widen in shock. Your focus charges up and you flick your wrist, blasting a spell into his face. He brings his hand up, but the blast would hit his brow and his glasses would crack. Ah! He stumbles back. His gaze turning in rage as he looks at London behind you. Do you... What? You and this clinic are done. She didn't bamboozle you though. Nice. <laughs> Not everyone can, like, unanimously enjoy the same actor. It's just the universal truth. Some people love Nicolas Cage. Some people despise Nicolas Cage. Where do you fall on the spectrum? He continues to stare at London. How is this possible, my treatment? I'm certain that I conditioned your mind! Did you really think that you could trick me? I've been playing that game my entire life! London shouts, a hand running through her hair. I think I can tell when people are trying to lie to me! Her mental fortitude is that strong. It's over. I feel like Kim would have been the type to listen to ICP. Now, I don't know what ICP is, but when I first glanced over, I read SCP, and I'm like, yeah, Kim would be an SCP fanboy. You raise your gauntlet one more time as Orm would slowly lift his hands and surrender. No, no. There's no need to get irrational. He lowers his head and narrows his eyes as his glasses fall from his face. I would appreciate if we did not cause a scene in my clinic. So, just lower your gauntlet. We may speak about this matter civilly. Yeah, there's nothing to talk about. Where's Lucia? My goal was never to harm a patient. You pause as Horm's hand would fidget in midair. He snaps his fingers loudly, and you watch in shock as his form would melt away in the mist. But it seems you've left me with no choice, Rex Fitter. Humanus, 
is all yours. Humanus! You look around the room as, as the room would begin to blend and morph, growing in size. Orm is nowhere to be seen. From behind you, the door into the room would open and a young man would waltz in. Waltz in. It's about time. He exhales confidently, adjusting his sleeves. His long, braided hair would flow behind him as he tilts his head at you. I was waiting for the opportunity to fight you, Rex. Why do you look familiar? Ah, of course. Where are my manners? You may have let me in on car before his untimely demise. Although, naturally I didn't go by Humanus in such a place. Instead, I chose a rather humble name. Crispin. What? Fuck, wait, shit, wait, fuck, wait, shit, wait, fuck, wait, shit, wait, I'm spitting. Oh shit, what? Hold on. Do, 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 do. No. Um. You f fuck. Alright, fine. I don't have a problem killing another greater. Let's do this. Oh, fuck me. And there's one room. And in one room, begin! Shit, what the was it? God damn it! He's just a dude. What is this magic? Yeah, fuck! What the hell is this magic? <laughs> Shit. Fuck me. I'm not in a mindscape. I would feel acutely aware of that one. Is this reality? Oh, fuck me. You're like Dan, aren't you? Oh, shit. Oh, god damn it. Fine. I'll kill as many as I need to. Until I figure out which one is you. And then you're done for. Ah, damn it. Where did that shot come from? I was stronger than the rest. I couldn't tell. Ugh. This is really starting to piss me off. Yeah, is that where you're stationed in Oncar to learn more about vessels? That was your objective, huh? Man, you must be one patient guy to play the long game like that. Hmm? Oh, shit! Damn it! Again! The hell did that attack come from? What are you on about? What the fuck are you trying to say? They couldn't hack it, so they stopped logging in. Shit, where the fuck are these attacks coming from? Damn it! What are you implying? You're a fucking Venus flytrap. <laughs> you f 
fucking, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Show yourself, you bastard. I'll rip your head from your shoulders. How dare you? <laughs> Which one of these is you? I'll kill them all, I don't care. I'll burn this fucking place to the ground if I have to. So everyone, every single person that I've lost, every vessel, you're nothing. You think this is me upset? This is nothing. It's one of these. Like, you can top that? You're full of shit! Even if I do believe you! Oh, damn it again! What? Fucking... I'm gonna kill you for that! Where? Where? You're dead. You're dead. You're fucking dead! I hear you. You're right there! Come here, you bastard! Fucking die! Die! You fucking prick! I'm gonna fucking kill you! You fucking fuck! Die! Fucking die! Die! What? Die! 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 Fucking die! I'm gonna enjoy watching the light drain from your fucking eyes! I will fucking kill you! As you and the man crash to the door of the illusion, you would jam your knee into his sternum and wrap your hands around his throat. <sighs> it seems... you found... the real one. <laughs> I'll fucking kill you, do you hear me? How dare you do that to Lucia? How dare you give her away? Did my confession upset you that much, Rex Vitter? <laughs> he grins, despite his body slowly losing oxygen due to your grip. He brings his own hands up to your wrist, attempting to pry you off. You're quite scary when you're mad, aren't you? <sighs> I suppose those rumors weren't a lie. <laughs> yeah, you think I'm scary now? I'm going to be your worst goddamn nightmare. Just mine. Um, slowly, he raises his left hand bringing it away from your wrist and snapping. Around you, the illusion of the arena would begin to fade away and melt into a mist, just as Orem had before the fight began. You look around in confusion, your hands still tied around his neck, before your gaze falls on Lucia. You'd be standing near closely, close by, looking at you in horror. R Rex? Uh, you... 
Lycotic vessel, get him off of me! Wait, why? Look, wait, Lucia, this isn't what it looks like. Help me, Lucia! He's choking me! Crispin coughs to make a dramatic show of his pain, his brow furrowing in concern. Lucia just stares at you in shock. What the fuck are you doing? She asks you quietly. You quickly bring your hands away from Crispin, causing him to cough and recover. <coughs> <sighs> I always knew vessels were dangerous. Never to this extent. He's, he's lying, Lucy! You know that I'm not a liar, Lucia. I just had such a nice conversation before now. I was telling you how- Shut up, both of you! Just shut up! She snaps. I can't focus while you're both yelling at me! You vestals in the Alacrum Edict, your voices are so annoying! She grits her teeth. You can trust us. You know how dangerous vessels are. And now this one would even try to kill me for no reason. It's not for no reason. They tried to kill you, Lucia. With alienists, remember? Ilyanus is a loose cannon. I promise you that she was not acting under edict orders when she tried to do that, Lucia. She will be dealt with for treating you so terribly. We want to protect you from the dangers of vessels. These past several months, almost a year, do you really think it was all a lie? Everything was true. And you know that deep down. I don't know. Lucia hesitates, looking between you both. Just Stop trying to convince me, goddammit! I, I hate you! I hate both of you! I- I can understand why you don't trust us, but I promise you that you can. She stares at him for some time, before looking back at you. Lucia. The moment that your guard is down, Crispin would pounce grabbing both of your arms and pulling them behind your back, shoving you into a wall. No, Lucia! For your own safety, I'll ask that you stay back and allow me to apprehend this psychotic man. I promise that he will never bother you again. Lucia's eyes widen slightly at the statement. She backs into the table behind her, her hands clutching at its edge. Lucia, you don't have to trust me. But no matter what, I have always... And will always fight for you. Oh, this is quiet for some time, while Crispin would ignore your words and continue to attempt to capture you. He chuckles, speaking to you in a low voice. <laughs> really, Rex Peter, I thought you would be more of a challenge. After all the reports I was given from those other poor vessels, they said that you could be a real monster. But in the end, you're just another lost child. Out of his depth. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter now. Once I hand you over to Rowan and feed the owner or a hefty snack, I'll go back out into Mythos, and the rest of your friends will be your next on my list. After all, how could they resist helping Crispin? The poor, wandering traveler. 
<laughs> you are naive. You are all naive. You- oh! Suddenly, Crispin would shout in pain, letting go of you quickly. He stumbles forward, allowing you to see Lucia standing behind him and a pair of scissors lodged into his back. L Lucia? What? Why would you do that? He falls to the ground, knocking over glasses and tables, reaching for the scissors in pain. I thought you trusted me. I thought... You thought, Lucy would growl. Well, let me tell you something. I'm sick and tired of people lying to me. Holy shit. He stares up at her in shock, and you watch as his eyes would slowly close. Lucia just glares down at him quietly. How did you know he was lying? She doesn't look at you. After a moment, she opens her mouth to speak. I didn't, she states simply. Suddenly, from the speakers throughout the clinic, you hear static as they come to life. Orm clears his throat on the other end. Well then, Hexfeter, it seems that you have thoroughly ruined this clinic, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, you know, chat obviously reads ahead of me speaking, which is like fine, you know, that's like a natural thing. If I hit it too early before like an important like line is done, then sometimes they'll see like a big important thing, you know, it kind of ruins the timing of the scene. I will re report this transgression to Ignis. Then again, I'm certain that doesn't surprise you, does it? Perhaps I shall be seeing you again. But personally, I hope that we may simply go our separate ways. The clinic has been thoroughly evacuated. I have no doubt that you plan on destroying it as well. Make it quick, and never return. With that message, Orm would turn off the intercom. Seems like we've got this place to ourselves. Might as well see if there's anything worth of value here. It's probably not going to be in the exam rooms. Pharmaceuticals? Maybe. Too much time to rifle through that. I just hope they got out of that situation okay. Based on this delay that I just had to undergo, there's no way that I would even get there in time to do anything. This is the records room, isn't it? That, that's something. Case study, Lucia Pendragon. September 20th, 2021. Miss Lucia Pendragon, a young woman of mythos origin, was brought to my clinic on the state with a rather serious diagnosis. This young woman was rather close ties with the vessels, specifically the dangerous vessel known as Rexfeter, the Silver-Eyed Dread. With the help of Humanus and his undercover affairs, knowledge of her location was leaked to Alienus, who upon orders from Rode Pierce immediately moved out with the intent to capture her. 
She was found in the forest near the voidal arachnid experiment, and after Alienus' successful execution of Samuel, the brother of the voidal spirit Jester, she was taken from the grip of Marshmallow and transferred to us in chains. Her expression was rather dark. She had a convicted countenance about her, despite the circumstances. I would commend her courage, however, as her psychiatrist, I cannot help but feel concerned. Clearly, she holds Rexfeter and the other vessels in high regard. That will clearly have to change. October 19th, 2021. Conditioning has been complicated. Despite my attempts to remove her interactions with the vessels from her mind, she is eager to continue remembering fondly. On occasion, I have been told by my nurses and fellow doctors that she mutters about them in her sleeps. Even with our constant efforts. Clearly, this treatment shall take some extended efforts. January 5th, 2022. Several months have gone, and for the most part, she has forgotten the vessels. However, we shall still here act defiantly against the edict, almost out of habit. She will additionally talk about a friend or a guild leader sometimes, although she would not remember his name. On occasion, this title of friend would turn to lover, but this would be rather rare in comparison. How pesky. I shall take further study and conditioning. September 23rd, 2022. With the activation of Machina underway and Kane's attempts to drown the world, the clinic has grown in population. However, while we encourage other patients to find company in one another, Lucy would prefer to remain rather solitary. This behavior worries me. According to our reports, she was far more social previously. Perhaps the conditioning has dulled her abilities to socially interact with others. This will need to be corrected for her future mental health and stability. In other words, however, her memories of the vessels have all but banished. She will not recall them at all now, and she will only remember the edict as her salvation. What I find interesting is that despite this level of heavy treatment, I did not have to change her mind on one fact. Vessels are dangerous. She seems to have been aware of this since the start. And I cannot say that she's wrong. <sighs> Let's get back to the castle and hear the damage report. <sighs> They're fine, right? Fine. Fuck.
So um, be sure you go check out the other perspective. You know, Dan and Ghosty, either one of them right now, because they are miles behind us right now. So we're going to be sitting here for a bit. Hi, guys. I'll put us on a cute screen, too. Hold on, let's go to a boom. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that cute and adorable? Look at that screen. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, hi. We got to wait. Got to wait a bit. It's very unfortunate. But, you know, that's how that conky cumbles. q and time? Sure, why not? Let me go use the restroom first, then I'll, like, go ahead. I have nothing better to do with my time. They can't hear you. I could unmute you after, I guess, but BRB. All right, we're back, and Candy can live again. Ave Maria. So, what's up, boys? How are we doing? Oh, make sure you're also checking out Lily Two Hundred One and Marshy Malice's perspective. More importantly, Lily Two Hundred One. She's the one that's putting in a shit ton of work. So yeah. Does Ignis have any phobias? <laughs> no, she is by her own definition the perfect specimen. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So how could you ascribe flaws to the perfect specimen? X, choose one or two. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go three, boss. Hi, Rex. Lily has now heard my rant on Thrones. Did she enjoy it? Shit, how about I just have like a Lily watch party? I'm about to pull this up on my twitch.tv. Let's just see what they're doing like real quick, you know what I mean? And hold on. Maybe I can actually pull this up on like stream as well. Give me a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch party! Twitch.tv slash Lily201. Okie dokie. And then if I go here, and I go here. If we're, if we're watching, can we still do... Can we still do... Can we still do... Can we still do... Hey, have you heard... Ethiopian jazz. It's an advertisement. Shut up. I have 111,000 channel points. I could ascend for a second time. If Agnes has one fear, what do you think that fear would be? Um, spoilers. That's what it would be. She, yeah, she's afraid of people spoiling things. Yeah, just like me, which is why I wouldn't say what it is. All right, here we are. Boom. It's Lila 201. Where were we? We restreaming. Um, after most people uh, don't oh, yeah. learn. Shit, I can't fucking chat in Lily's chat. Oh, yeah, because I'm not logged in on this Google. <gasps> why am I getting double added? What the fuck, Lily? It blends beats from like. I just oh, got God. Cut, like twice in a row. I just got out of this. Amazon Music. Shut up. How are we doing? <laughs> Honestly, why am I not subbed to- oh, because I'm not logged in, that's right. Normally I have a You mean the sub. thing that you just like? Woman no speak. <laughs> woman no speak because woman no rights. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I will just go- I fucking- I'm out of the Let's hit her with us. <laughs> I, I literally have the dog up I forgot, I can't like- <laughs> okay. Dog. Let's uh, sign Where up. Bing Chaling. Um, after Damn it! No, it's oh, taken. Yeah. <laughs> Chilling is taken. Not being chilling. I'm tempted to learn some Spanish. Hola, Queen Manet. ¿Cómo estás? You know, some words in Spanish are the same as in English. Uh, you know, like doctor. Not exactly. But I did do a bit of research. What in, is uh, the most commonly crashed in area on the server? Uh, 
London. The most common East Haven. What? It's either East yeah. Haven or Vanguard, but it's probably East, East Haven. Haven. Vanguard. Yeah. East Haven has more HD skins. Vanguard's just laggy. So, we're, you know, I'll say it's... Although, we, we have had a couple of times of memory leaking in Ravenguard. Like, specifically, you guys only have to go to other places. East Haven can take people down on its own, man. Damn, I smell a Rex. I am here. They know my presence is nigh. <laughs> oh no. What's the epic is tyrant is in your chat? Let me hydrate. What else really comes to mind? I think you ruined it. Yeah, Tyrant. Favorite, favorite type of viewer. The people that support everyone. He's currently doing an apprenticeship. Wow. If only she told me about these things, but you know. You guys totally aren't giving, like, no, yeah, everyone, just give Lily paranoia right now in her chat. Then I'm watching her every movement right now. Thanks for the help. Tell her that Rex yeah, is judging the line guides. Oh, and, she's gonna, um, she's gonna. She yeah, every single time she stumbles over a line, I, I know. I see all. <laughs> My PC crashed. Aw. Next, you have a Discord? I do have a Discord. I use it for professional businessmen only. I was like, wasn't that one asked or answers, have answers that have spoilers? That's the unfortunate thing. Some of the coolest questions are things that you'll have to find out eventually. And hopefully, we answer them all. No, there's no Unless guarantee. these questions are just like of past events that require clarification. Me, what the fuck? Yeah, like if you're asking about like past events that like you know, like from like ancient early days of Mythos, I might remember most of this stuff there, and also stuff that doesn't matter. Probably try to answer that. It's also tricky to like. Yeah, like is Kane's mom a milf? What's up with what's up with your what's up with your your chat just at just saying that Kane's mom is a milf? Shut up. So I'm never like really in a personal fan server because I never really set one up. Lily set up hers and it's she like sunk a bunch of hours into it. It's like really well made, but I never really had the opportunity of having that. Um, so I kind of just use the Mythos fan server. I support the project that I am the owner of holistically. <laughs> and so I try to make sure that my fans go there. And the reason why I try to make sure that my fans go into the Mythos fan server is because they're also exposed to all the other creators that I value and I create content with and that I care deeply about. One day I'll probably have my own fan server. I would love that. But, you know, I wouldn't be able to make it well. And I'm not going to ask Lily to make one for me because that's like, this is a dick move. So... I don't personally have one, but if you want to be able to connect with me, I am very not like I don't type all the time in the Mythos fan server. I am unfortunately a busy person, though I do want to fix that. I do want to be more engaged with you guys. Um, but whenever you put messages in art, if you put a funny meme that like pertains to me, any art that I think is especially cool or pertains to me, um, in like memes, media, art chat, I typically respond to those. I read over theory discussion religiously. Occasionally, I'll respond to questions if I see them. Um, and yeah, the, yeah, overall, um, like, I, I, I know, try to keep engagement at least there. I exist. And, like, you know, if I don't acknowledge something uh, on the Discord server, I can typically acknowledge it in a stream. It you know, some people come into my chat and they're just like, hey, Rex, have you seen this art and did you like it? I'll be able to say yes or no. And then, you know, if I have it, I'll typically look at it on stream, but sometimes I'll look at it after stream. Um, but most of the time, I'll have already seen it and I'll be able to be like, yeah, that was really cool for this and this and this. Well, you know, she agreed. She wasn't, you know. Like, I've went into extensive detail on stream about the fucking... Or was it on stream? Because I was like talking about it for a while in A-Call about the Atticus, Harmony, and Ozzy art. Because I loved it so much. Enjoy the ads, Rex. Ah! Why did you say that as I got my- oh my god! Fucking why? Why? You've condemned me! Just because I'm not logged in. You're about to make me log in in stream. Ooh, new prime loot. What the fuck? Why was there 56 there? All right, there we go. At least we're supporting Lily's stream this way. Which vessels have gone to the all nowhere? Any vessel you don't see around anymore, it's understood. Yeah. <laughs> Any single vessel that you might remember forever ago that is no longer part of the SSP, all nowhere. That's how they got written out. How do you think NPCs would react to item duplication glitches? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. What? I think that's like quite literally bending reality. Is that not god oh, power? Uh, <laughs> but if it okay, like it, if a vessel's doing it, at that point they're just <laughs> like, yeah, it's just a vessel <laughs> shit, man. Or you know, then maybe another time. <laughs> if a vessel does it, I think at this point, like everyone, um, 
okay. every I'm single NPC a... that interacts with Speak a vessel numbers. can just look at it and be oh, like, oh, there go the vessels being fucky again. Can you describe uh, the mythos of lore leading up to this point uh, so far? Oh no! Oh god! So there. What's his journey? Right? I'm sorry. I don't have like a fucking musical number for this. That'd be hilarious. Can you imagine? No, what's the point time? People got in a server and then they started fighting each other. Turned out the server was real and like an actual world and whatever. And then there was an alacrum edict trying to destroy the world. So all the vessels started working together in order to fight this alacrum edict. The first ritualist they took down was the supreme ritualist of Terra, who was all like, "Oh, I am super. I am like super loyal to the edict, and I'm like the weakest like supreme ritualist out of all of them." Um, he turned Marshy's like old treehouse because now she has a new one. Her old treehouse into a spider den, so it had to be burned down. And then he pretty much snuffed out the light of the sun and put everything like the entire continent of Mythos into like insane darkness by corrupting Calix's um, tomb. Then we went there, we purified it, killed it. Well, we didn't kill him. Ron Pure showed up and because, you know, I, I'll talk about this one. It was never really stated in character, but I've always talked about it out of character. Is the reason why Rowan Pierce took it upon himself to kill Sirium is because he can do without one Supreme Ritualist, especially if it's Sirium. It's not a big deal. But he already was aware of people like Wolf defecting and swapping sides, you know, like that, that like, you know, that, that was like a thing that could possibly happen. I don't think it had happened at that point. I don't remember the timeline necessarily. Well, okay, so at that point in the timeline, Wolf was a double agent. Yeah, so he's like, okay, well, I don't need people defecting from me. So it's better if he doesn't have the chance to, because he knows Sirium's just going to follow around, like, the, the person that, like, you know, whoever, he's like, you know, like a, like a dog, but like a really like scummy dog, I guess. I don't want to insult dogs, so it's like not proper, but the point is he didn't want to risk Sirium flopping to our side and suddenly becoming an asset to us, so he just went ahead and seppukued him right there. So Okay, so Sirium is a kiss ass. He's gonna he he will side with whoever's strongest. Yep. That was just that thing. So he got dealt with. Um I don't remember who was next. Wolf joined up, and then he was like, I'm the Supreme Ritualist of Predicio. Now, let me tell you about the other Supreme Ritualists. Now, they might be okay, and they might not. He was like, there's this chick named Iris. She's super hot, and she's up, like, in, like, a subtle, like, discreet mission. You'll, like, have to take a long time to get there. Um, there's this chick named Lamia who, like, might be okay, but who knows? She's smart but dumb. Um, <laughs> she's it, reclusive. I re I recently rewatched that. Wolf was like, I don't know when I last talked to Lamia. <laughs> yeah, he was like, Mira's insane, but deep down, he's a good kid. And then he was like, um, I know nothing about the Supreme Ritualist of Order because he is an enigma. Um, Aqua is batshit cuckoo butter, so you're gonna want him dead. And uh, that was like pretty much the breakdown, yeah. So um, then we were like, cool. And then Mira was all like, bah! I am evil and then he got a shit rock by Tabby and Tabby was about to kill Mir and Rex showed him and went don't kill him for whatever reason just don't kill him just like you know let's let's be merciful and she was like okay you're an idiot and then they showed mercy and then Mir like crawled his way over like a little sly dog over to Swan's Island um before it had like a bunch of buildings on it um, and then put a ritual on there disguised as a boy named Mirio who's like yeah I'm here to help you protect your island me 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 um and then he took control of the Guardian of the Tides, which was this abomination created by Cain. And we know he creates abominations. That was like one of the biggest ones he ever made. Um, that ties in a blink lore, but it's not too important. What you just need to know is he indirectly was the cause of it. Um, Mirror was assigned to control because Mirror was full of flux, you know, and so it reacted to flux. So he made a ritual called the Guardian of the Tides over Swan's Island, started flooding it out. A bunch of like sea creatures started attacking it. We killed the Guardian of the Tides of that island. He escaped and he was like, haha, I escaped and I'm super guy. And then he got like attacked by like Rowan Pierce and then Wolf picked him. Or was it Wolf? I don't remember. Someone. No, like, yeah, Rowan, Rowan attacked him and was like, I don't need you, bitch. And then wolf was like oh no this poor like dying child yeah and then they imprisoned him and then we were like should we kill him or should we not and then they're like okay let's kill him and then wolf was like don't kill him and then we're like fuck fine and then we like conditioned him and then he went to like rehab or whatever and now he's like somewhat mentally unstable but cool dude um so then that happened uh then at some point we like went to east haven to like you know a different continent Terramos. it's the only other country seen in mythos but there are a bunch more um we went there, and then we were like, oh, this and this, and eventually we found the connection over to the Aether, and then we walked over to the, um, like, Pillar Mountains, we went up to, like, the Aether, and then we were like, oh, this Aether Kingdom's getting destroyed by usurpers, they're not connected to the Edict. Fucking finally, a villain that isn't connected to the Edict. Actually, no, before this, we actually dealt with Order. Order was an enigma, turns out he was a soulless person, and every single, like, little bit of, like, his role within the Edict was mysterious, because he was a different person every single time. And he was also one of, like, Rowan's, like, close inner circle people, like, not known at the time, Ignis. 
um, Kane and Order. And so he is all like, ah, oh, Order, infiltrate Aetirin because you can disguise as whoever you kill and they're stealing their soul, so go ahead and do that. So he killed the old leader of Aetirin, Genesis, became Genesis, disguised himself as Genesis, and then tried to destroy Aetirin. Um, Vessels found that out. They threw hands with him. Rex won because, well, first Wolf tried fighting him, but then he took Wolf's soul. Rex won because he took Wolf's soul back. And then Vix's soul back, who was the head guard of Aetirin. Um, and used them both in addition with, like... No, it was just those two, yeah? And then... uh, it was those two, but there was foreshadowing of Iris. Yeah, there was foreshadowing of Iris, because Iris's soul and soul was there, too. And so then we threw mad hands. We went pow, pow, pow. Um, and beat the shit out of order. And then he was like, bah, I'm dead! Ugh! And he died. Um, then, uh, we went to the Aether, did whatever shit. Iris is all like, uh, I'm actually- Actually, no, you guys didn't kill, um, Order. I just, I also rewatched that stream. You defeated him, you left, he came back, and then Sam murdered him. Oh yeah, Sam murdered him. The, the specifics aren't important, I'm just talking about overarching shit, you, you know. Okay, well, Sam killing so, him is anyway, important! Anyway, shut up! Look, I literally ah! glossed over all of Blanks, all right? I'm just trying to get through the fucking main plot. Shut the fuck up! So then we go to ah! the Aether, and then they're, like, being taken down by people that are just like, oh, we don't like the king because he's Rex's twin brother or something. Not important. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of complication there. He just looks like Rex. That's all you need to know. Um, and then Iris is there, and she was all like, ah, I'm not a bad person, but the, I have to follow Edict Orders, and they told me to watch Aether the Aetheria fall, and so I have to do that. So I'm going to subtly guide you into helping save Aetheria, but I can't actually help you save it. And so we save Aetheria, and then she's like, cool, I'm going to join you now, Pokey Fingers. And then she's like, she comes and goes, because she still is like working for the Edict, obviously. Um, actually, before this, we probably... We were all like, hmm, there's some weird stuff around the nether. We're seeing pipes up here. And there are these beetles that aren't native to this area of the nether, but they're crawling through these pipes to migrate over here. And then we captured one, named him Bug. And then we were like, Bug, let's bring us to your homeland. And then he guided us to his homeland. It turned out to be inside of a pipe in Lamia's factory. And then we went through Lamia's factory. There was some Viden foreshadowing, not important. Um... And then we we um, threw mad hands with like Lamia's quote unquote greatest creation, which was this gigantic golem who was like Rio Domo Arigato Mister Robato. And so we threw hands with that, and then we were all like, "Bang, let's go!" And then we like tussled up, and we ran over to uh, why do I have a DM? Dan sent me a B plushie. Okay. So then we um, we ran over to what call it? They're still not done. <laughs> Uh, so to explain, Ghosty's internet cut out, and it logged her out of everything, and it ended her stream, so they're trying to get it back right now, and then get her back. I'm about to go to sleep. Anyway, so then, um, what else happened? Bug? What happened to Bug? He's just still around. He's just, like, background, you know? We don't have enough, like, screen time to have everyone constantly relevant, unfortunately. There's have too many fucking characters. Yeah, all you need to know is Bug's character pretty much got completely resolved during that Lamia thing. Like, ever since then, he's been a minor character. That's all his character was ever needed for. So, we dealt with that. Um, he was just around to be cute. Yeah, we, like, kidnapped Lamia, and we were all like, now nah, you're on our thing. And this is, like, a weird period of time where Candy's like, I really want to act as Lamia, and, like, acted as Lamia instead of, like, us just having Lamia be an NPC. Anywho, eventually Lamia was like, yeah, all right, I'll I work for you guys. I was strange, okay? You still are. Anyway. Oh. So that happens. Um, then we take, like, a fucking year to kill Kane. He takes, <laughs> at some point, he, like, almost dies and then gets away, like, several times because Candy's an insane simp. Shut up! And then he took over Vanguard, and then, you know, that was, like, a big character thing. We had to, like, rally up, like, some allies, a lot of which Rex found, like, obscure allies in, like, very obscure places. And then they went to go take back Vanguard. They successfully took back Vanguard. And Kane didn't die there for whatever stupid narrative choice. Stop! You agreed with it in the moment, and then- In the moment. I agreed with it three months earlier, and then the entire time that we were doing it, I said, this is kind of like a, you know, it's kind of dumb to not have him die here. But okay. We didn't have time to change it. Don't act like I'm like a Kane supporter. You... I, I respected him as a listen character whenever he was like introduced maybe twice. By the fifth time, I was done. Anyway. Why did you ever listen to me? So then Kane's like, oh, I'm going to make a water machine. And then it rained for like seven months. And then we went to Machina, and Machina was like, I am Big Robot, I foreshadow Ignis by being Big Robot. And then we're like, wow, cool, let's go beat that up. 
And then we're ah! like, pow, 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 Chimi, yo, thank you for following. And we're like, pow, 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 we'll bang, and we beat up the robot, and then Cade's like, oh, I'm dead, because I'm taking my own life, because no one can kill me, and ugh. And they're like, well, dang, now he's dead. At some point along this journey, we got introduced to different graders of, like, varying significance. Some of them died the same stream they appeared. Some of them were literally, like, mini-bosses in, like, certain scenes. Hello, hola. I don't know Spanish, unfortunately. And cool, hello. Um, what else? And so, yeah, uh, Alienus got introduced, I think, with the abduction of, uh, Lucia. And so that was like, well, cool, fun. And then that was like, you know, Lucy got kidnapped forever ago. There's a whole five months of mythos dedicated to what can only be described as a filler arc. No, no, no. Quite literally, that's <laughs> what it is. I'm we sorry. It's a filler arc. Um, where okay. they went, we... Up, where we went up to the Aether, and then we realized that they had a problem with something called Celestials, and we had to go in this giant quest around the like. Aether in order to try to restore the goddess's connection to the realm and stop the celestial invasion spurred on by the goddess Kresla, who, you know, isn't like an actual like person that like ascended, but instead was like, you know, the super fucked up creation that has like lacking a lot of human traits and qualities. So, yeah. Yeah, and that went on for like five months, and we threw hands with a god. Quite literally, you can staple that plot point anywhere in the plot, and it won't influence anything, because that's how self-contained it was. It was a remarkable arc, but it's it, it's pretty much like, it, it's like the, uh, that's the Mythos movie. <laughs> oh my god! If Mythos is the anime, that's the Mythos movie! Yeah, and it's just like five months long. Like, more than like 72 hours of footage. So, I rewatched yeah. the Aetheria arc once a month. If you want to watch an arc without having to have like bearing on anything that's going on in the plot and you've never seen it, you can. You don't need to watch the start of Mythos to get the the Aether arc, really. You, it'll take some catching up, but we did a pretty good job of making it self-contained. A lot of things you need to understand within it were explained within it. And there, yeah, there are references to like things outside of it. Like in one stream, Rex sits down and he's all like, Oh, I have these memories of King Cyrus. We need to go back to that Twilight soon. Here's the plot twist. We didn't for like three more months. Anyway. <laughs> I think there's also, um, and then, you know, there's like the short backstory things that you can just catch on with. Like Lily having history with the the idealists. So if yeah. you don't watch any Aetheria before that, but again, you can like catch Rex on. Is like twin brother or whatever the fuck. Uh, but again, a, you can catch on to that. It sort wasn't of stuff. written to be its own self-contained thing. It wasn't written to be take five months. But I make mistakes in my time, so like it's not perfect because it wasn't intentionally written with the like you know idea of being entirely self-contained. But that doesn't make it any less a remarkable arc or any less worthy of watching. So if you yeah. want one of the best. No things we've ever Reverend done Drake. i would say it's reverence yeah i was kind of because i was like um that's like my my mozart masterpiece right there <laughs> because <laughs> for the was all like what are we gonna do for this one and then i sat down with like a fucking quill and i just started scribbling out character shit no no dude i got like a bunch of pictures off of pinterest and then we took like hours i think staying up really late just ascribing characters to all of the pictures and then making the entire plot with one I of the, feel like one of the best villains I think I've written in like a really long time. And I'm not yeah. sure if I would say it is the best, but he's definitely up there. He he's up there. He's really good. Because I think Iris is up there. I think Rowan Pierce is way up there. But I I Adam on my personal scale, I don't give a shit about candies. Adam personally for me beats out Kane. <laughs> no, I get that. He is like excellently I think written. That Adam he was is like scary. he was believably malicious, you know? It was like, he's not evil for the sake of being evil, but you were like, I smell it in his nature. Yeah, that's why I think that, that's why I think that Adam is scarier than Kane. When was the latest foreshadow? What do you mean? Foreshadow to what? Or do you just mean in general? Because, thick, man. <laughs> you know how much shit I'm foreshadowing all the time? Every stream Dude, is a foreshadow. foreshadow every stream. Yeah, it just depends on, like, to what extent of things. Like, you know, some things are, like, your stuff and some things are like big but like you know i don't know how to really range that i mean i guess here's like a super reachy one but we're not actually probably even going to get the chance to ever tie it in but there was one stream where we met lynx i think where we went out to a dark forest and we found some ruins that was insane foreshadowing for something that we might not even be able to fully explore in the context that we uh, want to oh uh, i just remembered it and you hurt me <laughs> 
Yeah, you can definitely see yeah. it that way. The dude's called the All-Knower. It's all up to you. It's your, your entire interpretation. But there's tons of... I'm not saying all foreshadowing is perfect, you know? A story develops as much as you write it, right? Characters exist from the very beginning, you know, like Kane, unfortunately. Um, but some characters, you know, are obviously added in later. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and act like Ignis's character was there from the start, you know, and was always planned to be written. But we always knew that there was going to be another Ignis from the very beginning, I think. Well, I wouldn't say very, very beginning, more like immediately after we introduced Lamia. We knew that there was going to be a second Ignis. Uh, Rex, mute upstream real fast? Yep. Alright, yeah. we're back. I really am. Not expecting it to be perfect. No, there's, there's... Sometimes I wish I had a time machine. Like, genuinely, I wish I could go back to the start of Mythos. I would change so many things. And I mean, that's obviously, like, this is a two-year journey. But I think one of the first things I would change is it not being a two-year journey straight out. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that... We're if, creatives, you know. Back. And while Mythos is, like, a fantastic story... There are some fucking great ones that we could tell. Yeah, I'm, I'm dead ass with that. And there's some like choices that got made narratively and things like that that would always be like changed, revisited, and everything like that. Um, that's another thing that I always want to tweak. Oh yeah, at the start of Mythos, we didn't have the intention or scope that we do now with Mythos. But I would always like to go back to the start and kind of gear it more towards that. And you can see a distinct way in like which the early Mythos was treated and late Mythos is. Mainly in like... We didn't balance it because we never knew that it was going to go this long, but there's like no more survival elements like at all in Mythos now. But it was such like a heavy, critical core part of early Mythos. Like there were entire streams that were like tiny bits of like not connected interactions, you know, that didn't really like there wasn't like any consistent arcs, you know, like shout out if you remember or have been watching up the VODs and you've seen Hugo the Parrot. Because if you're watching the stream, then you probably know that who the fuck is that now, right? <laughs> oh my God. it's things like it's that like, well i mean it, it's also like with the edict thing we never really wrote mythos expecting the alacrum edict to be the main villain well, mythos wasn't written with a overarching plot line initially at one point we sat down we went it needs one and then it became the edict and my god i've been paying for it ever since <laughs> I don't think it was that bad an idea. Sure, there's some execution. I made it too big. I made it too big. E it took a year to kill Kane. Come on. Okay, but you know, that one isn't on you. That one's on me. Yeah. That's still. It, it's it's like sort I of am a... the, I am the guy that gets the final say. You know what I mean? It's at yes, the end of the day, but it's still... I'd still say that it is in many ways a joint effort, you know? Regardless, um, I'm not sure if it's abundantly clear, obvious or not. I'm not going to like state anything until it's more set in stone, but we are closer to the end than we are to the start, vastly so. Um, and without getting too specific or immediately like you know trying to like break hearts or anything, you know, I and mean, all things come to an end. Um, know that this project ending, and I will say this now, without saying anything about the future explicitly. <laughs> the group that you know and love is going nowhere. The uh, concept of making stories and producing content and just overall the energy that you see within and feel within Mythos SMP. I can only see it getting better after it's like done. If I'm completely honest. Mm -hmm. I mean like what? Half of Mythos was spent with me on the dog shittiest computer ever. And now I'm like, I know what I'm doing and I actually have a Twitch following and we have people that are watching these things. I'm just, and I've learned a lot from writing this SMP. This project shouldn't have gone on for two years. That's never going to happen again, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean that there isn't more remarkable stuff in the future. 
I mean, I don't know what my full streaming career is going to look like, but what I know is I don't want it to end anytime soon. So as long as you see me streaming on Twitch.tv, I'm not going to give up being a creative at all, period. So even if, how do I phrase this? The end is not an end. It is an end rather, but it's not the end. It's like the Stanley Parable. I'll always be a streamer. Yeah, I'll always be a streamer. It's not like my content's going to vastly change afterward. You know, unless like all of you decide that suddenly you hate, you know, the kind of content that we're working on. But we do it for passion. But to that end, also at the end of the day, um, the passion definitely outweighs like what we get back from it. I get your satisfaction. I get your enjoyment. But one day I'm not going to have the overabundance of time that I have. Some of us are already losing that overabundance in time. When that happens, it becomes harder to deliver the same amount of content at this elevated quality consistently. Honestly, Eli, it, you never let that stop you. I've, I've made that excuse so many times. I was like, man, if I only had help, if I only had this, if I only had that, and I've had so many stories that I've tried making die on that. If you want to do something, and this is like the tired thing tradition, right? But if you want to do something, you do it. I say, I, I, I'll carry this with me. Me streaming consistently in Mythos SMP were born out of the inspiration that I felt with the concept that Unis Ana stood for, which mm -hmm. was an ending. And the idea that they sat down and did it because they wanted to do it. Because they went, you don't have all the time in the world. You have so much of it. But if you don't use it right, you're going to waste it. And that doesn't mean you should be living every day of your life feeling like your time is a waste. You know, you should always take breaks. You should always have time to yourself. If you're enjoying your time, then you're using it well. But if you're feeling yourself lie awake at night like, damn, why am I not doing this? I wish I could do this. I should do this. You should do that. If that brings you joy, then the work will be worth the effort. Mythos SMP is not an easy thing to keep up with, guys. There are so many mental breakdowns involved. There's so many, like, nights and, like, days spent devoted to work. There's so many risk problems involved. And yet, it's, it's worth it, because the people enjoy doing it. But more than that, they hope that, at the end of the day, in doing it, it's something that proves fruitful. And so what's, like, significant for me is that I can look at my view count right now and I can see that I'm, like, over 40 viewers. And that, that is inspiring. Because when I started streaming, I had single digits. And now I'm here at 40. And I know that if I keep going, it won't matter the content that I make. I'm going to have viewers that are going to be here that are going to act like pretty much my friends. Because <laughs> I have a connection with you guys. We converse, we talk, you support me, and I try to support you guys as much as I can. And in that, I get to do the thing that I enjoy, yeah, which is creating I'm stories and asshole. making things I'm from it. As it long here. as it always is beneficial, yeah, you know? It's kind of like bitch. why I was about to Google it, then I realized that no, probably shouldn't. Um, Afmo doesn't really make no, 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 story-based content anymore because it wasn't it, beneficial it, anymore. It, well, yeah, it's it, tragic, it's but I want to create it's stories. I, I do. It doesn't matter the medium to me. If I can do it while streaming, great. If I can, like, get signed on, you know, to, like, direct, like, a TV show and screenwrite it, cool, great. I will film Adaptation, one of my favorite book series, in a heartbeat. If I could pitch a story to an anime studio or create a webtoon that people follow, it doesn't matter what the medium is. It's whatever I choose to do. And I'm hoping... My, my realistic hope and ideation is that I can make enough of an income off of Twitch that I will that will open so many doors for me to be a creative. And Twitch is like the most fruitful right now. Me and Candy and Marshy have tried making a webcomic. I've tried, you know, a million other things. The only thing I haven't tried my hand at is writing a novel, but so help me God am I going to. I just need to do it, which is like something I always say, but I just need to do it. So once that happens, and um, once, you know, the world starts turning, it doesn't matter how I get my foot through that door. Once I get my foot through that door, that's that. But ever since I was a kid, I've wanted to be a YouTuber. Not so much a streamer, but I wanted to be a YouTuber because Twitch wasn't really big when I was younger. But now Twitch is big. I am enjoying the shit out of this. My biggest problem with making YouTube videos is not having friends and not being able to talk to anyone. I cannot talk with myself, even though that's effectively what I'm doing right now. It's like a brain psyche thing. I don't know. Um... I'm better at well, conversing. I mean, I'm like present, but you're Shut more Shut the like... fuck up. So now I like... <laughs> so accessing a chat? Mm, I love it so much. I, I enjoyed it ever since I had one person that consistently typed in my chat. Right? And I remember so many of the names. And I'll carry those names with me for fucking ever. 
Until I, you know, get dementia. But anyway. <laughs> Jesus. If you care about something, you'll figure out how to do it. You know? That Kane starts. That's sort Kane still. So that's Greater's name, and are they tell him? Tell him. The the Greater's name is Aversio. That was the sword. It was Aversio's blade. Yeah. See, I watched. I didn't watch Asmo heavily. I watched. I never watched her season one. I watched like half of her season two of Minecraft Diaries, and specifically episode one hundred of her season one, because I loved the finale. I thought it was cool. Um, pretty much I, I lost interest in the story when it started going into her being like a god shit anyway. Um, but I enjoyed that. What inspired me from a young age was, I'm probably going to date myself. Let's see if anyone remembers them. Um, i not sure if this is fully true, but I'm pretty sure it is. The first Minecraft roleplay, Shadow of Israfel by Yogscast. I loved it so much. It was made at a time before Minecraft had hunger bars. Yeah, go ahead, Eli. Yeah, it was made at a time before Minecraft had hunger bars. They didn't have, like, NPCs or anything like that, like, Aphma relied on, that, like, a lot of, like, the storytelling genre relied on. They got a shit ton of people to buy... They, they bought Minecraft accounts. You couldn't change your name at the time either, I don't think. With the names of the characters, and then they would go into the, the game, and they would act that out and they would have these characters type this shit out and the main characters Lewis and Simon would be able to talk to each other but to communicate with the NPCs of this world they would also type in chat back at them but they did a bunch of shit you know they had to stop like the spread of like an infection that was sand and they were fighting this evil dude named Israfel and they made friends and they went on like these journeys and they had what were genuinely impressive builds for the time they even had like a GoFundMe and a fundraiser the final episode the last episode that they ever left on, the one that was going to follow before, like, a bunch of stuff happened, they could stop doing the project, and it ends, like, on a cliffhanger, which is unfortunate. They were making an animation. They hired someone to make a Minecraft animation, and they were very far along in it. Noxcast doesn't do much now, but they never, like, really gave up on that storytelling thing either. They have, like, other stuff. Like, what they were working in story with, like, they used to do mod reviews back when that was big. And they had something called Yog Labs, in which they would have, like, labs where they would, like, test out mods, and there was a story ascribed to that. Um, I love, I love cute stuff like that, right? I would love to be able to bring that back. I, I want to become the nostalgia machine of Minecraft content creators. But anyway, um, and even if it's not, like, you know, even if I'm appealing to, like, people that might not remember the same old Minecraft shit that I do, I almost want to reinvent it. It's, like, a more newer age and, like, be, like, cause it's still quality. It just needs to be kept up and no one's keeping it up, you know? So I would do that. Anyway, carrying on. Tangent. Um, they also had, like, that way later on, they started making, like, this series called, like, Derpules or whatever, right? And then that transitioned into, like, a story-based thing, too. And it was interesting, because it was, like, they did, like, these goofy- I might watch it again now. Because they did, like, these goofy little competitions with each other, and there was, like, they were trying to appease this, like, god named Derpules or whatever. And so, like, every single time they had a recording, they had a challenge, and then the stream- like, the- the episode would be, like, each of these, like, teams trying to fulfill said challenge. Some of them is, like, write dumb poetry, you know? Some of them is, like, craft like the most ridiculous thing that you can or some shit i don't know but yeah there's some Yu-Gi-Oh role plays everyone gets inspiration from their own places this guy does minecraft even though he turned out to be scum you know i hope he can improve himself as a person that's what i hope for um but ah! i enjoyed his minecraft role plays too he did like brief ones they weren't like super intuitive they weren't like super super like flashed you know but he had, like, a, a short, like... Because there was the big Minecraft Apocalypse one. That one's, like, whatever now. But he had a cool one. You know, he did, um... Shit, he did a pirate-themed one. And then he had the Minecraft um, Crafting Dead, which was, like, a big thing. But, like, he had a small part of it before merging the actual thing and then whatever. Um, and I loved his part of it. I loved, like, his content creation as well. Uh, there was a guy named Newscape Pro. He made an Undertale... Uh, Minecraft roleplay and he also made a fallout Minecraft roleplay and they're both phenomenal too I always enjoyed the storytelling medium even when it was in Minecraft and it almost felt nice because I had an intimate connection with Minecraft and so because I had an intimate connection with Minecraft, seeing a story also generated in Minecraft added a personal feel to it because I was like oh my god I played this game too or like when I was watching Shadow of Israfel I didn't even have the game yet I didn't own it I didn't own it until like a year later and so I got to watch like you know them play like the Minecraft, and I was like, man, I would love to do that. People hire something students for him. Yeah, I mean, 
I was also like when I went through a voice acting phase in like high school, I was also part of a bunch of Minecraft role plays that never went anywhere either. Um, but I'm the guy fucking making them. That's nutty to me. I have invented, with the help of Candy Queen right here, a new form and medium of Minecraft storytelling. And I really don't see a universe where it doesn't just get better. I will call it right fucking now, alright? I'm not sure how long it will last, but I will be the pioneer of a new age of Minecraft storytelling. A live medium of Minecraft storytelling that is just as effective of the storytelling in the past, just as entertaining, if not more, with new possibilities with what's available to us now. I think it is totally feasible, and I am excited to do it, and I'm excited to keep doing it. And I think that Mythos is a gateway into that. So, yeah, anyway. Mythos is the pilot. <laughs> oh my god. I'm glad Mythos can inspire you. I hope to god, if there's young people in my audience, if, you've, if there are tiny people here, I hope that you grow up on this, that you watch this, that you experience this journey, and even new tiny people, even like older people, Right. I don't care who you are. I hope you leave this with that same level of inspiration that I got from the people that inspired me. Because that's what's important, all right? We're only on this planet for so long. How do you live eternally? You make that time worth it. So yeah, anyway, uh, I'm going to guess we need to transition back based on that Dan appearance. Huh. You know how it be? We didn't want to interrupt. Well, we can interrupt you being inspiring. I love it when you get all inspiring. Don't say it like that. Well, what do you mean? I can't say it platonically as something I enjoy? Man, I won't say I've been sitting at this table forever and I'm super in character oh right now. God. I wonder how it's going. You heard him, guys. He's super in character. Kenny, shut the fuck up. <sighs> You're back. Yep. Where are the archangels? There was an ambush. Adriel didn't make it. And right now, Ghosty's trying to process it, so she ran up to the barracks, take some time to process everything that happened. Why did she bring him? No, this isn't her fault. When I tried making a deal with Ignis, None of us knew. I, how do I put this? The edict does not like light creatures. At all. Right? <laughs> it's why they just are light things in general. High concentrations of light, they try to deal with it. They, they tried wiping out the animin, and they're like not even that high on the light spectrum, right? Right. They tried, well, they mostly succeeded in darkening the calyx temple again right mm -hmm. archangels they are stronger than angels and we know they hate angels so how much would they hate archangels i i don't know they've been keeping tabs on them thoroughly it Wait. was um they were actually going for ghosty yeah they were going after ghosty adriel yeah. took the head Natural, yeah, stepped in the way. When I was talking with Ignis, I asked her what kind of deal I could make for Rowan Pierce. She asked for the Archangels. That's how significant she thinks they are. Oh, shit. Well, they killed one, so... And in response to... me denying that, that I would just hand them over to her, she revealed that she knew exactly where they were. And then, because I refused to peacefully hand them over to her, she just went ahead and called an attack. I couldn't get there as fast as I would have liked because Orem decided to be a thorn in my side yet again. Guy's still not dead, but... 
That explains the ambush. This was a loss today. We didn't succeed in any of our objectives. Right. The I mean, only thing we have close is there was nothing in there regarding the all know we're entering the nether. That's the only thing that we got. Great. So he's going to go straight from the abyss to the overworld somehow. That's worse. Yeah. Considering we don't have a feasible way of getting in there without being a spirit ourselves. And that's not really possible. Yeah. But my end, obviously you could hear that my negotiation failed. Yep. And we got hardly anything. Literally we walked away with a more greater kill, gone. though. Lucia executed Humanus. Or Wait, you might know him as Crispin. What? That name sounds kind of familiar. Crispin. Apparently his job works under Ignis was to pose as a traveler. Infiltrate a location where vessels are known to be. And then interact with an overabundance of them. Typically playing the role as someone in peril or a love interest, or a companion. Huh. And in various instances, alluring vessels who, you know, their job is to protect people into traps where they then get captured by the edict and sacrificed. He alone is likely responsible for countless vessel deaths, removals from this world. And in addition to that, he was also responsible for Alienus locking down where Lucia was. Keep us under our fucking nose this entire time. Welcome to the club. <laughs> you know, I didn't even fucking know that he existed until the attack until Onkar was literally on fire. My understanding is that's how I tried to operate. He only formed a connection with his targets. is dead. It wasn't the reason that we went out, but at least we left with something. Here's what's gonna happen. We cannot assign the Archangels on any more missions. Wherever they go, they're going to endanger everyone around them. She's not important. <laughs> For the reason being that if the Edict is going to target them some thoroughly, the second that they announce that one is there, they're going to immediately call for however much backup they need to try to kill them. Any mission that we try to conduct, therefore, and they're not exactly subtle people, because they're so bright, any mission, you can expect high resistance. High, high resistance. Anyone with them can be expected to be caught in the crossfire, too. Not only that, but they would be in danger themselves if they can't even overpower the Edict, if that's how strong their voidal powers are growing to be. In effect, they may have killed one of our allies, but they've rendered an entire squadron ineffective. And our next mission is off to think of what our next move should be. The stakes have been rising. The casualty numbers are increasing. As much as we're damaging the Edict, they're starting to damage us right back. I can only assume it's going hand in hand with the all Ascension. Ascension. Oh shit, if they're killing more people, obviously they're adding more souls. Even if that didn't- even if Machina only like barely cut half, it's still something. What's more I'm more worried about is them possibly getting more powerful. Did you notice anything like that when you were out? 
Yeah. I mean, they were assholes like normal. But, I mean... Lesser ritualists weren't that hard to cut through. Sergeants were the worst. Sergeants. Explain. Big ass bitches. Basically. So my theory is right. Onor's ascension is causing an increase in their army's strength. Some of their soldiers are now going to become more powerful. Yeah, even Ghosty got killed a few times. I have to be careful with our placements. I'm going to ask you for a debrief later on exactly how fighting these sergeants is handled so that I can update our records on enemies that we can expect. In the meantime, we've made no progress on plan A or plan B. I am going to have to take drastic measures and drag someone kicking and screaming into the limelight, communicate with some other people. In addition to all of this, we might need to draw Rowan Pierce out. If that's even possible. I mean, set up bait. That could be an option. Yeah, but there's nothing that I can think of that he would get for himself. The vessel soul. Traditionally, you'd think so. The capture works just fine in his regard. The answer might present itself to us in the coming days. Hopefully, anyway. It's all we can seek to achieve. For now. Let's stop. I think tonight we have planned a vigil. We'll just add one more name to the name list of the lost. We can set up something. In it's getting unfortunate. At first we did this maybe once every couple of weeks. Then it became weekly. Now it feels like we're going to have to start mourning the dead every few days. I have notes to take. Regather yeah. your strength. Yeah. yeah. See you at the vigil. See you. Not every battle can be a win, I guess. That's fine. I have stuff to write down. And... A book to discreetly leave under Lucio's pillow.